four people uh, who wants to declare shahada. So we uh, they can come to the stage. Okay. okay. Uh, one, one second. No, wait. wait. So you can stand. May I know your name, brothers? Can I have the names? Jomar. 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 Yeah. Your brother? My name is Vincent. Wilson. I'm Gilbert. Sorry? Gilbert. Stephen. Stephen. I would like to ask you a question that do you believe that there is one God? All of you? All of you believe? And do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Do you believe? Do you believe that, that Jesus, peace be upon him? Is he God or is he a messenger? Messenger, what do you believe? Messenger, mashallah. Messenger? Mashallah. Yes, that is one of the fundamentals of faith that we believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is not God but is the messenger of God. I would like to ask you, And you have a question. Yes, yeah. uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Zakir. Assalamu alaikum. So, uh, beginning hey. from me, I was raised Christian. Uh, believe me or not, from, from, uh, from I woke up from the, ch uh, from the childhood and become a mature, I didn't open Bible. That is really true. And everyone, and even, uh, even until now, but someone came to me, then re, uh, introduced me about Islam. So one thing left in me, since the uh, last 15 days, I started to read Quran and search about Islam. So one thing that I want to know regarding the Islam and regarding, regarding, the, uh, regarding uh, become a Muslim. I, uh, I prepared some questions, I, I prepared some uh, notes here, which is uh, I found in the in the YouTube, in other articles in the internet, that it says uh, uh, these words is came from Prophet Muhammad, peace upon, peace upon him. So I want to read this, then I want a, an answer from uh, Dr. Zakir regarding in uh, clarifications. I don't have any doubt to become a Muslim. I believe, I believe in one religions. But then I want to clarify first before my heart open and accept. The, the Islam and be, become a Muslim. Sure. Can I have the question, please? Yeah. So, uh, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, whoever killed a person having a treaty with, with the Muslims shall not smell the smell of paradise through its smell is perceived from the distance of the 40 years. Another thing, if anyone kills a man who grants protection prematurely, Allah will forbid him to enter the paradise. Another thing, Allah the Almighty, the Almighty, uh, Allah the Almighty, tortures those who torture people in this life. So my question is, is can there you, any can human? You the third? Can you repeat the second and third hadith, please? Second. The, the second. Can you come in the front here, please? Okay. I'm looking. Yes. The second is. If anyone kills a man who he, who he grants protection prematurely, Allah will forbid him to enter paradise. So my question for this uh, statement from uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Is there any written in the book that... Can I request that the parent can take the child out, please? Uh, request the father, can you take the child down, please? Jazakallah shukran. I request the volunteers. I believe there are less volunteers here. If there are volunteers here, if you avoid me telling on the stage, your ears should be sharp enough. It is mentioned very clearly that children below the age of eight should not be allowed here. So you see to it that the volunteers, the ears should be sharp enough. The moment you hear the cry the first time, the second time it should not be heard. So I request the volunteers to be active. And I request the parents themselves 
to do it voluntary because the Sharia says, let a small loss take place to prevent a big loss. We are having this, this program is being telecast to 100 million people. So please, please cooperate. You wouldn't like to be the cause of 100 million people not hearing correctly. So I request the parents, the moment your child cries, see to it that you move your child outside, outside the theater, please. Jazakallah. Can we continue? Okay. Back to, uh, back to my question. So if there is any written in the book that, uh, or in the Quran says that there is a one person, a human being, uh, sent by God or give the authority that God that kills a person, whatever this person has, uh, has sinned or even the heavy sins. So according, as what I said, Allah Almighty tortures the person who tortures human beings. So that what's is my your, question. What's your question? I didn't understand. Is there any human being that Allah, that, uh, Allah gives permit, permission to kill a person? Just ah. what we did, just what, what happened now and, uh, nowadays. The brother asking a question that does Allah give permission for you to kill any other human being? The hadith is called that if there is a tie, like the hadith, he quoted three hadiths. One of these says that if there is a peace treaty between the Muslims and the others, you have to protect that person. If you don't, then you will not enter Jannah. The second says that you cannot kill a person who is under peace treaty. If you do that, you shall not enter Jannah. All these verses talk about you should not kill any other human being which is under treaty. There is also another verse in the Quran which I quoted in my talk, which is a very important verse in the Quran. In Surah Maida, chapter 5, verse number 32, we say that if anyone kills any other human being, whether it be a Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if he saves any human being, he has saved the whole of notion. So according to the Quran, as well as the Hadith, you cannot kill any innocent human being. And a question, who can you kill? Only that person, as the Quran says, unless you cannot kill any other human, unless he spreads corruption. So if a person spreads corruption in the land, then you can kill him. Do not kill any other human being unless he commits murder. If someone has murdered someone, and then if you murder him, Quran gives permission. Secondly, if he spreads corruption in the land, for example, if a man goes and rapes a woman, it is spreading corruption. So the penalty in Islam for rape is death penalty. So the only two places where you can kill any other human being is that if he is spreading corruption in the land or if he has committed murder. Spreading corruption can include many things. For example, as I said, committing rape of a woman. So if these two things are there, these two are the only time where death penalty can be given and the Sharia specifies is where death penalty can be given. If you read the Hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are cases where death penalty can be prescribed. In all the other cases, if you kill any other innocent human being, if he is not spreading corruption in the land, and if he has not committed murder, then it is as though you have killed the whole of humanity. Hope that answers the question. Hope you are convinced. I hope you are convinced with the answer. Yes. So would you like to take the shada now? I request of the brother again. I prefer that the people should be down. They should not be called on the stage so I can interact. I'm turning my back to the audience, to the camera. Okay, as I was saying, that all of you believe that there is one God? Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? And you believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? Are you doing it out of your own free will? Out of your own free will? Are you doing it out of your own free will? Is anyone forcing you? Okay, I'll just say it in Arabic. The same thing, that there is one God, and Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, and you repeat it. Inshallah, after me. Ashadu. Can you give the microphone, please? Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Washadu Anna Anna Muhammadan Muhammadan Abduhu Abduhu Warusuluhu Wasulun. I bear witness 
I bear witness that that there is no God. There's no God. But Allah. But Allah. And and I bear witness. I bear witness that that Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Is the messenger and servant of Allah. Servant of Allah. Mashallah, we go Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that may He grant all of you Jannah, Inshallah. Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may Allah grant all these from the Jannah and through them may He guide other peoples to the straight path of Islam. The questions and answers. There are four stations. Um, each person can only have one question and uh, the questions will rotate along the stations. There are four stations here, and there are two stations in the back. And the question, it's better to be about the subject of the lecture. Uh, I, uh, also, it, it, it's better if the question is brief and to the point, and the questioner has to tell us first about, uh, has to tell us his name and his profession and please, we would like our brothers and sisters whom are non-Muslims to have the priority of questioning. Uh, so we request our brothers and sisters whom are Muslims to give them the chance. And uh, we will have one question from a young brother who's uh, uh, suffering from a handicap. We will give him the priority. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Ghanem. I'm 14 years old, and I'm in grade 8, and I'm uh, studying grade in Doha Academy School. Dr. Dakar, I don't have any question, but Dr. Dakar, welcome to my country, Qatar. A pleasure to meet you. You may ask me what I'm doing here. I'm only 14 years old because I love God and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and because I'm proud to be Muslim. Your lectures are motivating me to stay strong and defend our religion and beliefs. It hurts me when I read, when I read uh, comments in social media, mocking the Prophet and insulting our great religion. I'm really doing my best to learn how to confront such people and how to spread the prophet trustworthy words once again welcome to qatar trust me it feels like home because we feel that you are one of our big family and it was really my dream to see you and i always follow your lectures on youtube and i love you so much Thank you. Mashallah, President, know about you, and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he give you shifa, as well as make you a mujahid. That means to, to clarify the misconception that is being spread about Islam. And today, as we are aware, the social media, and the media is the strongest weapon in the world. And alhamdulillah, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may he make you clarify the misconceptions regarding Islam and me through you guide many people to the path of Islam inshallah there are four stages here and two in the back and there are people at each microphone or station who will uh, allow someone to start questioning 
And then the questions will go from one microphone to the other so that everyone will have one chance. As was mentioned, uh, as was mentioned by the coordinator, there are four microphones that have been arranged here. One on my right, the second on my left. Where are the other two microphones? Yes, one behind on my right and one behind on my left. I think two microphones are for the ladies and two are for the gents. And I request that the ladies should line up at the microphone which is meant for the ladies. Can the peop can some volunteer raise the hand which microphone is for the ladies? Which microphone is for the ladies? On the right on the top. The microphone on the right on the top is for the lady. And the microphone below is for a gent, for the brothers here. Here there's a microphone left below for the brothers. Ladies or brothers? On the top? Ladies. Okay, fine. The microphone on the rear part, on the top part is for the ladies. And the microphone in the front part is for the gents. I request that the sisters can line up on the microphone behind, on my right and on my left. And the brothers can line up on the microphone that is in the front, on the right and on the left. We request that if there are any non-Muslims, they should be given the first opportunity. If there are any non-Muslim and if they have any questions, they are most welcome to ask any questions on the topic, even outside the topic. The non-Muslims are our guest of honors today. So they can ask any questions on the topic as well as out of the topic. Any questions on Islam and comparative religion. Any questions on Islam, on Christianity, on Hinduism, on Judaism, on the topic, they are most welcome. Normally, after religious talk, you don't have open question answer session. I normally prefer giving more time for the question answer session than the talk. If there are any non-Muslim brothers and sisters who'd like to ask a question, please line up behind the queue. For the sisters, it's on the top behind on my right and left. For the brothers, it's down on the right and the left. I request that any non-Muslims who have any questions, they can please come forward to the microphone. They need not wait in the queue. Please pose your please pose your question. Please keep it brief. It should be two or three sentences. Anything more than that, it's a short lecture. Please mention your name and your profession so that I will be in a better position to reply. Can we have the first question from the brother here? Yes, brother, your name and your profession. Uh, my name is Shobit Jain. Sorry? Shobit. Shobit. Yeah. Uh, my question is, uh, I am believing the ultimate power, in the ultimate power. So is it mandatory to, uh, to give the name? Either uh, I, I will say that uh, it will be a God, it will be Allah, it will be a Bhagwan. The brother asked the question that he believes in the ultimate power, but does he have to give it a name like Allah, God, or Bhagwan? As long as you believe in the ultimate power, the Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse 110. The Quran says, Kulidullah Avidur Rahman, Ayyamatadu Fala Lasmalusna. Say call upon him by Allah or by Rahman. By whichever name you call upon him, to him belongs the most beautiful name. Whatever name you give to the ultimate power, it should be a beautiful name and it should not conjure up a mental picture. If you give it a name and you degrade it, then we object. If you give it a name and you degrade it, for example, someone who can rest someone who can lie, someone who makes a human being, uh, someone who makes a mistake, someone who can die. So if you give certain name and certain qualities to God which degrade it, then we take objection. Otherwise, you can call God by any name, but it should be a beautiful name. It should not conjure up a mental picture. And it should be a name given by Almighty God. Like that, there are 99 attributes given to Almighty God in the Quran. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Hakim, most gracious, most merciful, most wise, and the crowning one is Allah. 
So it is not required that you should give one particular name, but you cannot degrade it by giving it a wrong name. That is very important. And you say ultimate power, that's a name. I believe in ultimate power. Now ultimate power is a name. Correct, right or wrong? Uh, right. So you say ultimate power, someone says Allah, someone says God. Whatever you say, the definition of that ultimate power, or that God, or Allah, should not match that of the human beings. You understand? It should be one. It, it should, should not be two. Yeah. Allah was samad. It should be absolutely eternal. It should not be like Rajnish, which has diabetes mellitus. Correct? Asthma, chronic backache. Huh? He should not beget, nor should be begotten. And there should be nothing like him. That ultimate power cannot be two. It should be one. It should. So whether you call ultimate power, whether you call Allah, whether you call God, it should not conjure up a mental picture and should not go away from the true definition of that entity. Hope that answers the question. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I have one another, another question. Sure. Uh, to start to read Quran, it is mandatory. Uh, how much it important that uh, to believe in either God is exist or not? How much is important to start uh, to read? Well, that's the question. What is mandatory to start reading the Quran? Nothing is mandatory. To read the Quran, you should have a desire to read the Quran. It is not compulsory to read the Quran. You should believe in God and then read the Quran. If you don't believe in God, also you read. Inshallah, you'll start believing. So, for reading Quran, there is nothing mandatory. Only thing, you should have a desire to read. You, you, and when you read, your heart opens up. So that is the beauty of the Quran. The beauty of the Quran, there is nothing mandatory. Not that you should have a beard, not that you should wear a cap, nothing mandatory. You, only thing you should have a desire to read. And when you read, then your heart opens up and you realize the truth. If you believe in it, then you accept it. If the Quran, what I'm talking about, all this thing I gave in the lecture. If you start believing, you accept it. But before reading, you don't have to accept anything. Once you accept it, then you agree with it. Once you agree, then you follow the guidance. Because once what you start believing, then you start following. If you believe in what you read, you believe in mathematics 2 plus 3 is equal to 4, then you agree with it, then you start believing in it, and then you practice it. The same thing in the Quran, when you read the Quran, it opens up the mind. And you come to know the truth, and the reality, unlike any other book, which is more of a storybook fashion written by human beings. So that is the beauty of the Quran. It is the most positive book in the world. It is a proclamation for humanity. It is a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It is a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. This is the beauty of the Quran. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I asked to ma many people this question, but right now I got the correct answer. There is no foundation. Thank the you. People Thank you will so tell you, you should be in wudu, you should be in this. That is afterwards. That is once you start respecting, you start doing other things. There is no requirement as long as you read and you come to the true path because the Quran is a book of guidance to humanity. Have Thank you read the Quran, brother? Have you read the Quran? Uh, something, sometimes. Partly. Yep. Brother, do you believe that there is one God? Yeah, I what believe. What you call it is different. But yeah. you believe there is one God? I believe in a one God. Brother, do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? <laughs> Not till now. Not till now. Yeah. And I believe you are coming from a Hindu background. Uh, yeah, sometimes. Means, <laughs> you can say. Because uh, I believe in Hinduism also, Buddhism also, I read the many things from many different, different religions. So that's the thing only. If you read the Hindu scriptures, it is mentioned in the Hindu scripture in more than 100 places the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. More than 100 places. If you read Bhavisha Purana, Parva 3, Khanda 3, Adhyata 3, Shloka number 5 to 8, 
it talks about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read Bhavishya Purana, Parvatri, Khandatri, Adhyatatri, Shloka number 27, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If you read the Kuntap Sukta, Atharva Ved, book number 20, and if you read book number 20, Atharva Ved, hymn number 127, Shlok number 1 to 14, it talks about Narashansa, it talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are more than 100 places in the Hindu scriptures that talks about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'll just give you a detail of one. If you read the Kalki Purana, Kalki Purana, which is mentioned in, in Kalki Purana, chapter number 2, verse number 5, verse number 7, verse number 11, verse number 15, it says that there is a Kalki Avatar to come, whose Father's name will be Vishnu Yas. Vishnu means God. Yas means servant. Vishnu Yas means servant of God. In Arabic, it is Abdullah, which was the name of the father of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will, born, he will be born to a woman in the womb of Sumati. Sumati means serenity and peace. In Arabic, it's Amina, which was the name of the mother of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It says he will be born in a village by the name of Sambala, peace. That is Makkah. He'll be born in the house of the chief of the village of Sambala, chief of Makkah, which is the Quraysh family, and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was born from the Quraysh family. It says he will get the first revelation in a cave, which we know Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam got a Hira. He will, he, when he gets the revelation, he'll get at night time. And we know that it's mentioned in the Quran. Furthermore, it says that he will migrate northwards and come back. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam migrated northwards to Medina and came back. It says he'll have four companions, that's the fourth for Khulfa Rashidin. There are minute details mentioned about the last and final messenger, that is Kalki Autar in the Hindu scriptures. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, any almost the scripture of all the major world religion, whether it be Buddhist scripture, whether it be Old Testament, whether it be New Testament, whether it be the Hindu scripture, whether it be the Parsi scripture, all these scriptures, even though they have been changed, yet there is mention of one God in all these scriptures, also mention of the last and final messenger prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. My request to you, brother, is that you read and do research on this, and I pray to Almighty God that may you open your heart and may he guide you. Definitely, I will do it. Thank you, Armand. Thank you. Are there any questions from the sister's side? Any sisters? Yes. Any non-Muslim sister? Yes. Any non-Muslim sister? Yes. Uh, As alaikum, Brother Zakir. Uh, what I prefer that... Uh, sister, are you a non-Muslim? I am a Muslim, but Sister, what if I wait. go to be a non-Muslim then? Sorry? I am a Muslim, but what Masha. if I go to be a non-Muslim then? When you go to be a non-Muslim, then you can come in front of the queue. Now, if you are a Muslim, as per the rules, we give first chance to a person who is a non-Muslim. After the non-Muslims finish, we'll give the Muslim an opportunity. There is the, no non-Muslim in this queue. Not your queue. Not Inshallah, we'll see the other queue. Sister, are there non-Muslims on the top? Yes. yes, sister, most welcome. Can I have your name and your profession and a question, sister? All right, so my name is Rose and I work for Qatar Airways. My question is, I've heard you talk about religion so much and I'll speak of the Bible because that's what I'm aware of. You say, you talk of Jesus as religious leader. But as far as I'm concerned, Jesus did not come to introduce any religion. Neither is he a religion, religious leader. What Jesus introduced in this world was the kingdom of God. The second question, maybe you can elaborate, uh, which religion is God? Because as far as I do research, I've come to understand that Jesus, who is my Lord and my Savior, he did not introduce any of those. He introduced the government of heaven. In other words, he wanted to colonize world like with heavenly power. There's a lot of controversies. The other question is... Sister, please pose one question at a time. I already posted two questions. After the answer, you can ask the next question. Okay. One question at a time. The sister asked two questions. And I believe the sister is a Christian. She said that I said Jesus was a religious leader. I never said that. 
and never ever said Jesus, peace be upon him, was a religious leader. I said he was a messenger of God. There's a world of a difference between messenger of God and religious leader. A messenger of God is far superior. You have many religious leaders in the world today. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. And you said in your question that he is your Lord and your Savior. Yes. First, let me tell you, sister. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim is a Muslim if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, he was one of the mightiest messengers of Almighty God. We believe that he was the Messiah, which is translated Christ. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention, which many modern day Christians today do not believe. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. The Muslims and the Christians, we are going together. But one may ask, then where is the parting of faith? The parting of faith is that most of the Christians believe, including yourself, that we come to know from a question, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. And most of the Christians believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is God. Let me remind you, sister, I am a student of comparative religion. I've read the Bible. There is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. If, sister, you can point out a single unequivocal statement from anywhere in the Bible, a single unambiguous statement, from anywhere in the Bible, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God, or where he says, worship me, I, Zakir Naik, am ready to accept Christianity today. I have heard you, sir, saying that. I am not times. speaking on behalf of the other Muslims. I am ready to put my head on the guillotine. There and is not a single unequivocal statement. Hear my question clearly. Hear my challenge clearly, sister. There is not a single unambiguous statement not a single unequivocal statement where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or where he says worship me. Yes, sister. I have an answer to that, sir. Yes, sir. In the Most book of John, the Bible says that in the beginning was the word, the word was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh. What I want you to wait, know wait, is wait, that... Wait, 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 sister. That does not fulfill my challenge at all. You, you name the book, I will give you reference. You are quoting from Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. And the word became flesh is verse number 11, 12, 13. You are quoting only the book, I am giving you chapter number, verse number. I, answer but, me, wait, wait, the I'm, word became God. But what does that pulled, say? Sister, were these the words spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him? And the answer is no. What is my challenge? Not a single unequivocal statement not a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says. Himself says means that should be in red letter. There is something called as red letter Bible. If you are a Christian, you may be aware of it. Red letter means Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself said. Gospel of John, chapter number 1, verse number 1 to 13 is not in red. I'll answer it. Wait here, let us answer it. First of all, you have not fulfilled my challenge. It should be Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says, these are not the words of Jesus. It is the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. Correct? It's the word of a Jew by the name of Philo. And sure. never ever did he claim divinity for this. Yet, I will help you. What does it say? In the big, anyway, your quotation wasn't correct. I will give you the verbatim quotation. Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one says, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And later on it says the Word became flesh. If you agree that the Word is God, and if you change Word is to God, in the beginning was Word becomes in the beginning was God, and God was with God, do you mean to say there were two gods? No, because let, let, the word of God, complete. sir. Let me complete. You pose the question. You pose the question, I'm taking You don't allow people to give answers. You, are, you pose the question, I'm giving the answer. After I finish the answer, you can speak. You can't interrupt. Did I interrupt you when you were speaking? 
Did I interrupt? Yes or no? Now no. when I'm giving the answer, why are you interrupting? Let me finish the answer, then you can answer. Point number one, you didn't fulfill my challenge. It is not the word of Jesus. Your whole argument goes out. Yet I'm answering. You did not tell, you should say, sorry, Dr. Zakir, it is not the word of Jesus. Did you say that? No. You are not honest. Tell to the, tell to the audience, these are not the words of Jesus, peace be upon him. Am I right or no? You don't know, see? You are quoting and you don't know. I am a student of comparative religion. These words are not spoken by Jesus, peace be upon him. Yet I am answering. If you say the word is God, and if you substitute words with God, it means in the beginning was the word, becomes in the beginning was God. God was with God. Were there two gods? And the answer is no. I'll give you a third answer. If you read the original manuscript, the first time the word God is used, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God. It is hothios. Hothios in Greek and Aramaic means the God. The second time the God is used, it is tonthios. Hothios means the God, Almighty God. Tonthios means godly person. But unfortunately, in the translation, they are taking you for a ride. You go to the original manuscript of Gospel of John, chapter number one, verse number one. The first time the word God is used, it is hothios, meaning the God. Second time it is used, it tonthios means a godly person. So it reads, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the God. And the word was a godly person, meaning a messenger of God. Mister, do you understand? No. This is called, you don't understand English. I'm you tell me what English, I said is wrong. I'm quoting your scholars. I am quoting your Bible. You pick up any Bible of red letter Bible. These words are not in that point number one. You go to the Greek and Arabic. Do you know Greek, sister? Do you know Greek and Aramaic? Was the Bible revealed in English? Was the Bible revealed in English, sister? Yeah, um, it was Greek. Greek and Aramaic. So the original word is Hothios. Do you know what is the meaning of Hothios? Go home and Google. Hothios, maybe I'm pulling a fast All right, one. Sir. All right, wait, wait, sir. wait, wait, wait. Hothios <laughs> means the God. Tonthios means a God, godly person. That means even if I agree, it says Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of God. Do you believe in that? No. He's, Why don't... Bi he's bigger than messenger. He's not just a messenger. It's an sister, insult to sister, call my Lord sister, a messenger. Sister, sister, I ask you. We will what... do something to prove something, sir. But first say that what you quoted is wrong. You agree it is wrong, then we go to the next question. I don't agree. That means what you said is it's not word of Jesus. That means you're fooling the people, right or wrong? Did you. you... You thought I did not know, correct? No, I'm, I'm not here to demonstrate knowledge, sir. I'm it here to demonstrate... It is not the question of knowledge. It is the question of Bible. You believe Bible is the word of God, correct? Yes, I do. I don't believe it is the word of God. Even though you believe the Bible is the word of God, I know Bible more than you, right? There is one thing to know the Bible. There is another thing to have the revelation of the Bible. Because you know, even when Jesus came, the people who did not understand who he was were religious leaders. They missed big time. Sister, they did not know who he was because sister, he was hidden. And the work of the New out Testament. One place in the Bible where the un un unambiguous statement, unequivocal statement, where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says, I am God, or where he says, Worship me. I am ready to accept Christianity. Simple challenge. And you can't show one verse from this big Can volume I ask of you the Bible. Question, sir. Can you separate yourself from your word? Sorry? Can you separate Dr. Zakai Naik from his word? Can you separate Dr. Can you separate Zakai yourself from your word? But what difference does it make whether I can or whether I cannot? You see? You don't get it. Jesus is the word of God made flesh. But well, religious no. mind is too big for five senses. Jesus is the word of God and himself, he is God. The Bible every, says he gave him the name that is above every other name, every, which is the word of God. Every messenger gets the word of God. Moses was the word of God. Jesus was the word of God. Abraham was the word of God. Prophet Muhammad is the word of God. Question. So what is the problem? Which of every the messenger, messenger did what Jesus at this did? time is the word of God. What is so different about Jesus, peace be upon him? You the cannot difference. point out a single statement from your Bible where Jesus said, I'm God, or he says, worship me. I have, and now I you're have quoting... an answer for that, sir. 
Since the, the beginning of the word of, of the Bible, till the time of Jesus, tell me any of the messenger you call who was capable to cast out devils, to heal the sick. Why? Because in the beginning, it was only God who had power to deal with the devil from the fall of, the, from, of man in the garden of Eden. But these Sister, things were hidden for salvation Sister, of men. If a person takes out devils from a person, does he become God? Today there are many people who do rukya yes, and they take I out do devils. The same they don't become I've God. Been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Today, sister, there are many human beings, even in Qatar, you have who can do rukya and can take out devils from the human being. Because that does they, not make them God. Does they it make get, them God? They got that power from Jesus. I cast out devils myself. Oh, in so the name of Jesus. Oh, so you also become God now? No, I, I have been translated because of my faith in Jesus. The I Bible agree says, with you. You, listen. you, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. If you read the Bible, in the gospel, when he gives life to the dead Lazarus, he prays to Almighty God. Every miracle Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, did, he did in the name of God. He didn't do on his own. If Same you would thing give the Bible me time, says. I will explain to all this congregation Sorry, what is all about Sorry, we don't have, we don't have the time. You can hire the hall mm -hmm. and tomorrow give a lecture. This is a question you answer time. You answer me. You okay, can we have the next question? Yes, brother, your name and your profession. Yeah, my name is Jitendra. I am a software engineer. I have a question. Uh, like you said, all religion scriptures are uh, giving same message that there are only one God. Then why we need to be convert in a other religion? We can't uh, understand our own religion and follow this thing. Why need to be convert? Brothers asked a very good question. Brothers asked a very intelligent question that if all the religions speak about one God, then why do you have to convert? Yeah. If all religions because are the Allah same. converting from Christianity to Hinduism, very good question. Hinduism to Christianity that's, or Islam. That's what the Quran says. Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 19, in the Dina in the Lail Islam, the only religion acceptable in the sight of our Almighty God is to submit your will to God. There, God Almighty sent only one religion. All the messengers preached only one religion. But when they preached the religion, the human beings kept on changing it. The moment the scriptures got corrupted, Almighty God sent a new messenger and a new religion. All messengers taught the same thing. There is one God, don't do idol worship, believe in him. As it kept on changing, then Almighty God sent the final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. All the messengers from Adam, Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, Muhammad, peace be upon them all, all taught the same thing. Then Almighty God says in the Quran, in Surah Hijar, chapter number 15, verse number 9, we have revealed the Quran and we shall guard it from corruption. Now Almighty God takes it upon himself that this last and final revelation, the Quran, no one can change. Even if you want, you cannot change it. All the previous revelation, <coughs> by the passage of time, we human beings changed it. It was forgotten, it got changed, it got interpolated. Now when the last and final version, last and final revelation, if there's something like the Old Testament and New Testament, this glorious Quran is the last testament. This last testament, Almighty God says, He will protect it. Now what I'm trying to do, brother, I'm not trying to get division. What I'm giving a very simple formula, which will not hurt everyone which will not hurt anyone. The other people, when they talk, there is friction between religion. I believe in saying, Ta'ala wila kalimatin sawa im bayna bayna kum. Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 64. Come to common terms as been asked you. Which is the first term, Allah na puta illallah. That is worship nanmat Allah. What I tell all the followers of religion, at least believe that one book, 100% is the word of God. So Hindu would not mind saying, I believe Veda is the word of God. The Christian would not mind saying, I believe that the Bible is the word of God. The Muslim will not mind saying, I do not mind believing that Quran is the word of God. What I give a simple formula, let us agree to follow what is common in all three. You know, Christian, Islam, Hinduism, these three are the largest religions of the world. All three put together is more than 50% of the world population, correct? Yes. More than 50, two thirds of the world population. Two-thirds of the world population are Christian, Hindu, and Muslim. Yeah. Now, 
I tell, let us agree to follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. What is not matching, we'll discuss tomorrow. Let us agree to follow what is common. Now, if a particular thing is common, it's same in the Quran, in the Bible, and the Veda, would you mind following it? Yeah. Would you mind following it? Huh? If it's there in the Veda, would you mind following it? You wouldn't mind following it, correct? Yeah. Because you're a Hindu, correct? Same thing, the Christian wouldn't mind following what is mentioned in the Bible. What I am doing, let us agree to follow what is common. What is different, we'll discuss tomorrow. So my son gave a talk on similarities between Islam and Christianity. It was more than one hour talk. Yeah. I have given a talk on similarity between Islam and Hinduism. Let us agree to follow what is common. Now, when you do a comparative no, study, we come... Sorry? Sorry to interrupt you. I am agreeing this thing that uh, this there is only one God and we have to believe on that. Whether Sorry? What it, uh, I am agree that uh, concept that there is only one God. Very good. Uh -huh. Whether it's uh, you said uh, uh, the father of Jesus you are calling somewhere I, uh, here or uh, he the Allah or he the permission of Parabrahma, what do you call? Who is the same one only? Only the name are different. Wait, wait, wait. Let me finish now. This is your saying with your mind. Yeah, should I follow your mind or should I follow the Veda? Hmm? Should I follow what is in your mind or should I follow what is in Veda? Uh, in what is in Veda you are saying? Correct. So let me, what you are talking is half correct, half wrong. Uh, yeah, what I don't know saying? about religion, really other things. So therefore details. you hear, Quran says, Fasalu ahli zikri in kumtul atalamun. Ask the person who is an expert. I'm a student of comparative religion, I'm giving you references. Just because that lady behind saying Jesus is God, will you believe Jesus is God? No, I don't want to give any reference. No, I no. Just... Does the Veda say Jesus is God? Huh? Does the Veda say Jesus is God? Does the Veda say Jesus is God? No. No. Does the Quran say no? Even the Bible does not say. So why am I supposed to follow that lady? She wants to give a speech here. She quoted one reference that was so wrong. She wants to preach without references. So let us follow the scripture. Now when you do a comparative study of the Bible and the Veda and the Quran, we come to know there is one God, that, that God has got no images, no statues, mentioned in the Quran, mentioned in the Bible, mentioned in Hindu scripture. If you read in the Hindu scripture, Swetha says our Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19, it says, Na tasya pratima asti. It's a Sanskrit quotation which says, of that God there is no pratima. Pratima in Sanskrit means a photograph, a picture, a painting, a portrait, a statue, a sculpture. Na tasya pratima asti. Of that God there is no pratima, there is no image, there is no photograph, there is no picture, there is no painting, there is no statue, there is no sculpture. Hinduism says that, Hindu scripture. Quran says that, Bible says that. Let us agree to follow one God who has got no image, who has got no idol, who has got no scripture. No scripture. It says that God does not have any, does not beget anyone. The Hindu scripture says, Veda says that, Quran says that, same thing mentioned in the Bible. Let us agree. So what we, when we do a comparative study, we come to know, Almighty God is one, has got no images, has got no portrait, does not have any children, does not have any parents. Let us agree to follow that. Second thing we come to know, that all the scriptures say that there is a final messenger to come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Just before you, I gave the answer to the brother. You heard the answer? It's mentioned in the Hindu scripture about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Same thing is mentioned in the Bible. If you heard my son, he gave references from the Bible, right? From the Old Testament, book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 19. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number 12, verse number 29. In the Song of Solomon, chapter number 5, verse number 16. About Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he's also prophesied in the New Testament. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 14, verse number 16. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 15, verse 26. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 7. In the Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14. He's talking about Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So why don't the Christians believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Why don't the Hindus believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Now you tell me, it is mentioned in your scripture. The details about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that his father's name is Abdullah, his mother's name is Sumati. He will get the revelation in the cave at night time. He will have four companions. He'll migrate northwards and come back. All these details. Do you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, brother? I can't say because I don't read these things. So who's to blame? I'm giving you reference, correct? Yeah, you're giving a reference. So then I that means you have to go and check today. Yeah. 
and once you check today if it's there will you believe i can't say because i am very huh? can't say you believe with as the word of god now your word of god is saying last and uh, final uh, in that case i can say simple i am believing in one god uh, whether you so one god is half uh-huh. no no it's one not god. full no, only no. one god is one god part. Is, no one god is one only is the allah or you can say om or you can par brahma whatever uh, whatever but don't give it wrong name don't give it image anything you cannot it's say not to not god image. it's not image par brahma is not image you Sorry? can't if you call par brahma You Brahma. Can't say any, uh-huh, par Brahma how is Brahma? Brahma means you don't imagine what is the thing. Okay, how does Brahma look? Have you seen photograph of Brahma? No, nothing. Not because I have seen photograph of Brahma. Not Brahma. Par Brahma means Brahma means is Brahma. By Brahma this means Brahma. The, par Brahma means par Brahma. It carries the. Who is the creator of this world? We do, we don't we can't imagine this power. We can't imagine these things. How and uh, how he is looking. so we can't imagine his face and other things his power even you can't imagine so how you can imagine face and other thing so that allah or omkar you say that the ek uh, in, uh, i don't know much but ek omkar means is a ek single one half what you saying is right half what you saying is wrong because okay. today Aha, today and then is talking about brother, the muhammad no, brother today first me then today I when you ask any muslim what is the image of allah he will not say anything but when you ask a hindu what is the image of brahma he will tell you Brahma has got four heads on each head ah, is a crown Brahma and par Brahma do both are different that things, no? Brahm, if you have Brahma you cannot have par Brahma I'm not talking about Brahma is the you cannot God have par Brahma. Brahma you cannot have par Brahma why par Brahma par Brahma you cannot have because it is an superlative you cannot have superlative for god you understand Brahma par Brahma means superior to Brahma correct par Brahma means the pare means which you can't think about your imagination i know it brother yeah all these words so many of no. these words are wrong some words are correct therefore don't use a wrong terminology for god your knowledge is limited correct Man that's the limited. reason if your knowledge is limited sometimes you give a name to almighty god and make a image of that like vishnu <laughs> they make a image the attribute is good attribute is good sustain we agree with it but yeah. giving a image we disagree with it that's the reason what you have to realize you cannot go against the concept of the pure definition of god that god has got no image correct yeah coming to the second part you said you have not done research i am asking you go and do research i'm giving you references now okay i give you so many references you heard the references yeah or you go to my site rakir naik Mm-hmm. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Hindu scriptures. All the references are there. You check it up. It's it's available in my library. You know, I have a library of Hindu books and Christian books in Dongri in Bombay. It's all there. You go on the net. It's very clearly mentioned that the last and final messenger, the last and final avatar, the Kalki avatar, is no one but the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. Oh, uh, then he's the messenger like a saint, right? Sorry. Oh, uh, he's a son, a saint. संत यू कैन से नो संत अवतार कल की अवतार अवतार हैज गोट टू मीनिंग वन मीनिंग ऑफ अवतार वॉट पीपल थिंक इज ऑल माई टी गॉड कमिंग इन बॉडली फॉर्म विच इज रॉन्ग दैट इज द डेफिनेशन इन ऑक्सफर्ड डिक्शनरी आउ कमिंग फ्रॉम थ्र मीन गॉड सेंडिंग सम वन सो इफ यू से दैट गॉड इज सेंडिंग सम वन मीनिंग अ मैसेंजर वी एग्री विथ इट एंड द लास्ट एंड फाइनल अवतार इज द कल की अवतार सो माई रिक्वेस्ट टू यू एस that beside believing in one god beside the green he has got no idols you also have to believe in the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him i have given the talk on similarity between islam and hinduism it further mentioned in the hindu scripture that you should not have alcohol that you should not gamble it's mentioned that the women should wear hijab they should draw the head covering over the over the head over the bosom all this is mentioned that you should not gamble same thing mentioned in the quran should not have alcohol should not gamble it's mentioned that you should do hijab so you hear my talk on similarities between islam and hinduism and let us agree to follow what is common we will problem is you talk about unity but you don't want to follow who's to blame you take me anything in the quran which matches with your way that i will follow anything in the quran give reference number chapter number verse number dr zakir naik will follow mard ka bachcha right or wrong i am challenging you anything you open the quran with the translation dr zakir naik your quran chapter number 5 verse number so and so 
I will follow. I will not say, I will see, I will check. Immediately I will follow. I know, you are a, obviously a scholar. I am not, not a I'm scholar. I am not a scholar, I am a student. Okay, I am a student. a student. But even I am not a student. Even I have not started to learn about this thing. So become a but student. When will, you be, when will you? No, I have just a simple question asked when all the scriptures are saying same See, thing. See, when the hack is there, 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. Will you say I'll check up and then believe? 2 plus 2 is how much, brother? 2 plus 2 is how much? 2 plus 2 is how much? 4 only. 4. Do you believe in that? Yeah. Or will you say I'll check up now? No. That is the main basis of life. Your creator, you want to check up. And 2 plus 2 is equal to 4, you believe. This is the problem with us human beings. Our creator is there. Once you know, you should accept. No, what will my father say? What will my mother say? What will my neighbor say? What will my wife say? We think 20 things. If your father says 2 plus 2 is equal to 5, will you believe? No. But your father says, oh, don't read the Quran, then you don't read. No, no, I am not saying to reading any books, uh, means Quran or Holy, Holy Scriptures, all can read and they can believe. But there is no need to conversion from one to the other. If, you, if I am conversion... You don't have to convert, you have to revert. There is nothing like convert. Convert means you go from one track to the other track. It's mentioned by the beloved Prophet. Every child was born in Deen al Fitr. Deen al Fitr means accepting the God's commandment. When, when you grow up, you start doing idol worship, you start doing fire worship, so you become a non-Muslim. So when you come back to Islam, the right word is revert, it's not convert. What okay. is it? Revert Re You're saying. coming back to the original faith. No one is asking you to convert. And there's only one religion, religion of God. The religion yeah. Islam is submitting your will to God. I'm not telling you to go against God. <coughs> that submitting your will to God in Arabic is called as Muslim. In English, it is called as submitting your will to God. Give it any name, no problem. At least submit. We are afraid to submit. Now, that lady was taught by the church something wrong. She's believing. What can I do? Okay. Blind belief. Yeah, then belief is one part. They are believing uh, our belief. Believing in wrong things. I'm giving with reference what I'm trying to tell you. Follow your scripture. Follow your scripture. Even though your scriptures have been distorted, at least let us follow what is common. Right or wrong? Yeah, common so, we follow, we follow beliefs, we do practice. So now will things. you go home and check about the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad in the Hindu scripture today? Uh, no. <laughs> you will not check up today? I will try, I will not, I can't say anything. What is the use? I can't commit. <laughs> what is the use? That means you are not Marth Kavacha. What is the use? What you are talking, uh, you are talking about uh, people should come to common. No, it's not Why not should we yeah. fight? I'm telling, don't fight. At least follow your scripture. You don't want to follow. Okay, I will. You are educated. You are a graduate, correct? Huh? Yeah. You are a. How much time you spend in, in or studying all these subjects? I'm telling you, go two hours on the internet. You don't want to go. Who's to blame? You or me? You tell me anything in the Quran. I will go and find out today. Ask or not today? Now, just now. Tell me. I don't know about Quran. How can I ask? Because I want to follow the Quran. Okay, so suppose I am as a Hindu, I am practicing as a Hindu good, uh, as a good, uh, means I You are not practicing as a good Hindu, I am a good ah, Hindu. I am not, I am not practicing. I am a good Hindu. No. no, Hindu means what? Hindu means coming from the Indus Valley, India. I am come from India. Okay. You live in Qatar. Okay. If you live in Qatar, you can't be a Hindu. You live in Qatar, no? No, I am also came from there only. <laughs> no, where do you live but now? Huh? Where right do you live now? I am living here. For ah, so now you are not a Hindu. Okay, whatever, whatever. Because Hindu means living in India. I live in India. Okay. I am coming here as a tourist to give lecture, correct? Yeah. So Hindu by definition means a person who lives in the land of Indus Valley civilization. Okay. So by definition, I am a Hindu. This word was bought by the Arabs. Okay. Bought by the Arabs. Therefore, when I go to Saudi, they call me Hindi, Hindi. Hindi. <laughs> if I follow Sanatana, Dharma, what did they mention? Ah, that is what was said by Swami Vivekananda. Hinduism is a misnomer. The right okay. word should be Vedantis, should be Sanatana Dharma. Sanatana Dharma. But you're not following Sanatana Dharma also. Okay, I'm not yes, following. Sir. But what I'm saying, if I follow the Sanatana Dharma in proper way, then at the time of if last... If you follow properly, you'll believe in one God, you believe in Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, you won't have alcohol, you won't have pork, and all the ladies will start doing hijab. You and I will be one. Name no problem, correct? If you follow the Veda, if you follow Sanatatam correctly, you and I would be one. Right or wrong? Yeah. But you don't want to go home and do research. What to do? 
Hmm? You don't want to go home and do research. No, I will do. I will go home and research. That is. Inshallah. A, when you do today, tonight. Yeah, not today. Tomorrow. 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 Inshallah. Yeah. I am here for a week. Huh? I am here for one week in Qatar. <laughs> yeah. Do research and we'll meet again. Inshallah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, brother. Can we have the next question? Are there okay. any questions? I believe there are two microphones on the beach there down. Are there any questions? So you already said it. If there are any, if there are any microphones on the beach, Hello, sir. before you are getting the microphone ready, we request that there's a lady here. Try to ask the question. Yes, sister, most welcome. Good evening, sir. My name is Carolina and I am a nurse. I study a lot differences between Islam and Christianity. And I have, I have lots of questions, but the main question I have at the moment, you said that Islam accepts Jesus as a messenger of God. And uh, Jesus, when was asked about divorce, if the man can divorce a woman. He said that Moses gave, us, gave the permission to divorce a woman only because of the hardness of the heart of the people. But Jesus said that a man cannot divorce a woman. A man should leave the father and the mother and join the woman and they became one, one spirit in two bodies. So this for me is difference between what we believe, what I believe as a Christian, and what you believe as a Muslim people. Sister asked a question. She said there are many differences. What she's quoting is a verse from the Bible, from Gospel of Matthew, chapter number five, verse yes. number 27 and 28. That's correct. And, and I'm giving you the quotation. What you said, sister, is in your own words, which is not verbatim. Yeah. What Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said is in red letter. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27, verse number 28, it has said of the old times that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you, whosoever looketh upon a woman, that it was an old time, that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you, that, that whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after has already committed adultery in his heart. There are two verses, that thou shalt give a bill of divorce. But I say unto you, that whoever Whoever sleepeth with another woman shall give divorce. That means of the old law, sister, at the time of Moses, it was said that if you want to give divorce, give a bill of divorce. That's it. But Jesus Christ, please be upon him, says that you shall not give bill of divorce until your wife sleeps with somebody else. That means previously, at the time of Moses, divorce was allowed. To give a divorce, you give a bill of divorce. Now Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, a messenger of God, comes and changes the law. And he says that thou shalt not give a bill of divorce unless, unless your wife sleeps with somebody else. So there is a change. In Islam, it is different. In Islam, sister, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that amongst the permissible things which is the most hateful in the sight of God is divorce. Permissible, but the most hateful. That means in Islam, you can give divorce when required, when both husband and wife are not compatible. It does not mean that if the wife is bad, then you can give divorce, or if the husband is bad, then only can you give divorce. Maybe both are good, but they are not compatible. And we have many such examples. They were companions of the Prophet. Male companion and female companion. We have the example of uh, Zayd, may Allah be pleased with him. Along with the, another companion, a lady companion, Zainab, may Allah be pleased with her. They were married. They both were good. They were not compatible. You can divorce. Or can be one is not good. Wife is not good. Husband can divorce. Husband is, is not good. The wife can take divorce, can give kula. So in Islam, it is not like 
the times of Moses, give a bill of divorce, khalas, easy. Or at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, you cannot give divorce until your wife does fornication. In Islam, we have to weigh the pros and cons. And based on that, or based on that, so Islam, the last and final messenger came and said, divorce is permissible, but as a last resort. And how to give divorce? The details are given. So that is the difference between the teachings of Moses, the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hold that, throw some light on the differences. Okay, thank you. So do you agree with me that marriage in Christianity and marriage in Islam is different? There are different rules? Yes, there are different rules. There are different rules, but which rule is better, sister? I I'm asking you a question. In, 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 in the time of Moses, anyone can get divorced. Khalas, good, bad, ugly. In, in Christianity, only if your wife is caught fornicating, you can give. In Islam, if you're uncompatible, you can give. If they are not good, you can give. Not just like that. It is permissible, but the most hateful in the sight of Allah. Which would you prefer, sister? I prefer my religion and be with one man until the end of my life. Okay, if the husband comes and hits you every day, he drinks alcohol, hits you every day, blue and black, your eyes turn black every day, would you like to stay with him? We can be separate, but we cannot get married again. That's different. Well, I'm asking you a question. Wouldn't you like to find some other life partner? <laughs> we are not allowed. If you made a mistake. No, you are not. I'm not asking whether you're allowed or not. Which is preferable for a human being? In Islam, if you make a mistake in choosing a wrong partner, I think I've got for my sister very good person. I think he's very good. But after marriage, he hits her, he gambles, he drinks alcohol, black and blue. I would say separate. I'll give him chance, try reconciliation, separate. She can marry in, she can marry in the woman. What was her fault? What was her fault, tell me? Why should my sister suffer? What type of religion is this? This is hard religion. To Not be, hard religion. This, no, my religion is hard. hard religion, which is a logical religion. And today, today, but natural, we have to have husband and wife. They have to be. Correct? Medically, you should get married. Otherwise, if you separate, what happens in America? You know what happens in America? In America, according to statistics, every person, man and woman, they have eight different sexual partners before they settle down with them. The statistic does not say how many they have after they get married. Eight! Some have five, some have ten, some have twenty. It is human nature. So now if you say you separate, what will you do? So that is the reason Islam prevents the woman from going on the wrong track or the man from going on the wrong track. Divorce, marry again. What is wrong? If you make a mistake. It's so easy. It's so easy. Sorry? It's so easy. It's easy. It's easy. Not easy, it's a test. You know, it's a test. for us what, it's a test for all life. What fault, sister, what fault is it of yours? If your husband, I mean your husband may be very good. Hopefully, I'm just giving a hypothetical example. That if he does not treat you well, if he treats you, if he hits you black and white, and yet you want to be his wife, what is the logic? What time of religion is this? Isn't it illogical? This is the religion of love. Love? He's hitting you. What love? With him, that I will be with him until the end but of his life. But you're not going to separate. You're not with him also. I can pray for him. I can pray, you can pray and even, ask God to can, change the heart of this pray, man. You can even pray after marrying someone else. You can't pray. But in I want religion. to pray for my husband. Oh, you can pray for your husband and your ex-husband also. In Islam, you can do that. We, pray, all, pray. we all pray for my dad and he changed after 30 years of being alhamdulillah, alcoholic. Alhamdulillah, he changed. Allah gave him hidayah, correct? And my mom never gave up until he died. Very good. 30 years we all pray. Very good. And it wasn't easy. She, she might say, no, I want to marry somebody else. But do you mean to say if you marry, you cannot pray for your ex-husband? What well, kind of a religion is this? It's not a religion of love. In us, we can pray for a thousand people. Religion of love. I wish, I wish all Muslims pray for ex-wives and ex-husbands. Why, Why not? I wish. I have only one wife, mashallah. She's good. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. The most welcome. Are there any questions that are there on the beach? Any microphone on the beach? 
There are two microphones on the beach. Are there any non-Muslims who would like to ask a question? Yes. From the microphone that is there on the beach. Yes. Hello, sir. Uh, this is Guhan. Actually, in the beginning of your lecture, you told like you will be clearing the answers for agnostics because uh, you just quoted that. Where is, the, where, is, where is the brother speaking from? Uh, I'm from outside. the beach. Okay, yeah. but what's your name? Guhan. Guhan. Sorry. Guhan. 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 Yeah. Yes, brother Guhan. Uh, actually, in the beginning of your lecture, you told that you will be clearing the doubts of agnostics. Hmm. Uh, actually. Uh, there was one person uh, 2500 years before, uh, a man who lived and he never opened his mouth whenever his disciples opened, I mean, whenever his disciples opened a question of God. Uh, so can you please uh, convince how an agnostic should uh, see on God? Brother, ask the question, I said in my talk, I will convince an agnostic also. Yeah, it is the same I, thing, I brother, as the agnostic. Who will tell you, do you want me to give me a lecture again one and a half hour? No, no, no. I the agnostic, who will be able to tell you the mechanism of object which no one has seen before? The answer is the same. Even the agnostic will say creator. Agnostic means the person who is not clear. Yeah. And atheist means the person who doesn't believe in God. Even to the agnostic, the method is the same. I am killing two birds with one stone. That agnostic will tell you creator. Ask him the creation of the universe, how it came into existence about the shape of the earth, about the light of the moon, about the rotation. Again, I can give the full lecture, brother. Same thing. This methodology will not only convince an atheist, will even convince an agnostic, brother. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, that's OK. I'll just go through the crowd. Then we have the next question. Are there any other questions from the beach, from the microphone on the beach? Are there any questions from the microphone on the beach? Okay, the time you're thinking, can we have the next question? Are there, are there non-Muslims here? Yes, brother, most welcome. Your name and yes. your profession. No, we'll go in circle, no problem. Good evening, sir. My name is Naveen Kumar. I am from India. I am working in Qatar Fertilizers. Uh, actually, I was living here from three years. After coming here, I was, I know about, I was little bit know about Islam. Before that, I don't know anything. So from the colleagues I learned this is the Islam like this religion. So I read the full Quran. Uh, I came to know that Allah sent messengers only males. But not send any females like this. Only the messengers are the males. But I think the Hindus what we are following maybe Ram, Krishna, all are messengers. And what about the goddesses Durga, Parvati, what are all these things. So we are going in the wrong way. or. We have to revert back. If we are revert back, uh, why we are giving so many donations to the temples? Why these temples are there? What is the existence? We well, asked a question that in Islam, he came to Qatar, learned about Islam, and he knows there are many messengers in Islam, but there aren't any female messengers. In Hinduism, there are goddesses. Point number one, as I told you, in Hinduism, there's only one God. God. There are no goddesses in Islam. In Islam, the word Allah has got no gender. Neither male, neither female. Allah is uncomparable. But because in Arabic language, by default, we say kul hu Allah Say he is Allah. Because in Arabic grammar, when we use, there are two types of gender, male and female. For female, there are certain rules and regulations. If it's feminine by nature, like mother, ummun, or the sister, uktun, it becomes female. Number two, if it ends with ta, like the watch, saatun, it becomes female. There are rules and regulations. Or if it's in pairs, ainun, eyes, yadun, hands, it becomes feminine. All these do not match. So by default, we say hua. Otherwise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has got no gender. In <coughs> Hinduism, there is God and goddesses. That is the reason God is not the appropriate word. Because you can play mischief with the, Arab, with the English word God. We prefer calling him Allah. Why? You cannot play mischief with the Arabic word Allah, like you can do with the English word God. If you add S to God, it becomes gods. 
plural of God. There is no plural of Allah. Kul Allah wad. If you add D-E-S-S to God, it becomes goddess, meaning a female god. There is no male Allah or female Allah in Islam. If you add father to God, it becomes godfather. There's nothing like Allah, father, Allah mean Islam. That is the reason we prefer calling Allah by the Arabic word Allah instead of the English word God. Do you understand? Yeah. In Hinduism, you have God, goddesses. Yeah. That's the reason it is not, we don't agree with it. Regarding messengers, there's a difference between God and difference between messengers. Yes. Don't merge up both. Yeah, I know. Huh, you're yeah, merging here, then, then crack. So, first of all, in God, the Arabic word Allah is pure. All the other words can get manipulated. In terms of messengers, in Islam we believe that Almighty God has only chosen men to be messengers. That does not mean females are inferior. There are mentions of four great females in the Quran and the Hadith. Talks about Maryam alayhi salam. Mother Mary, the Quran says in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 43, wa iskalatil ya Maryamu, and behold the angel said, O oh Mary, inna Allah astafaki wa taharaki wa saki wa alamin, that Allah has chosen thee and purified thee and purified thee above the women of all nations. That means Allah has purified her. It talks about the other great women, for example, Bibi Khatija. May Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the Prophet. It talks about Asya in Surah Tairim, chapter number 66. Tairim, who was the wife of Moses. No, sorry, who was the wife of uh, Firon. So the Quran talks about great ladies. But why did Allah not choose women to be messengers? There are many reasons. To say they were not pure, I've given you examples. Yes, 25 men are mentioned, even four women are mentioned. Correct? Now, why? Because the responsibility of messenger is very high. For the woman, Allah has upgraded her because she bears children. Now, if you have to bear children, then give the responsibility of taking care of the leader of the house difficult, taking care as the head of state difficult. So Allah didn't want to put on them additional burden. If you are the messenger, you have to lead the salah also. You have to lead the prayer. How can a woman lead the prayer? In Islam, a woman cannot lead a congregation of men. So because of various these reasons, Almighty God in His divine wisdom did not choose women to be messengers of Allah. He didn't want to overburden them. He gave them some facility. That's the reason He has kept only men as messengers. Hope that answers the question. Uh, if I'm having any doubts, so I, how can I get the correct answers? Can you give me any mail email so that I can mail to that? that if question? anything with comparative religion, you can write to me at islam at irf.net. Islam at irf.net. Or you can go to Islam QA. Islam QA is a good site which gives replies. Anything with comparative religion, because we receive more than a thousand emails a day. And believe me, it becomes difficult. We have more than 500 staff working full time, yet we cannot reply to all the emails. Okay. If it's comparative religion, that's a speciality you can write to us. If it's general question, you can write to Islam QA. That's a very good website. Okay. Thank you. Yes, can we have the next question? Yeah. Assalamu yeah. alaikum, doctor. Islamu. We have a sister here. She wants to take Shahada, alhamdulillah. Okay, sister. Uh, sister, may I know your name? My name is Gurpreet Kaur. I'm a Sikh. Sorry? I'm a Sikh. You are a, you are a Sikh. Sister, do you believe that there is one God? Yeah, I do believe. Do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Yeah. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yeah, I believe. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, it's my free wish. So doing out of your free will? Yeah. Is anyone bribing you, giving money? <laughs> no. Okay, so you're doing all of your own free will. Inshallah, I will say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And Prophet Muhammad. And Prophet Muhammad. Is. Is. The messenger. The messenger. And servant of Allah. And. And servant of Allah. 
and survey to Allah. MashaAllah, may, may Allah grant you Jannah. You are a Muslim, and I pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. When a non-Muslim becomes the Muslim, our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that all his or her previous sins are washed away. Whatever good you did remains. Whatever sin you did, as many as there are, the moment you accept Islam, all your previous sins are washed away. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He, through you, guide the other people to the true religion. Thank you. Tadakallah, sister. Are there any non Muslims on the microphone on top? Assalamu alaikum, sir. Are there any non Muslims on the microphone on the top? No. Wa alaikum assalam. Inshallah, wait. Are there any non Muslims? Yes, I'm from. My, my name is Samuel. And I'm a Christian. Yes, Samuel, you're most welcome. You're speaking from the beach? Yes. Yes, Samuel, you're most welcome to ask your question. Yes, my question is uh, Do Muslims believe that Jesus is the Son of God? And also, that they believe that uh, Jesus was a messenger, like, just like uh, Moses, Elijah, and the rest. Uh, uh, also, is there a difference if going to heaven, do they go to heaven through Jesus or through Muhammad? Thank you. Well, the question, Brother Samuel, do Muslims believe that Jesus is the son of God or do they believe he's a messenger like Moses and Samuel and others? And do they go to heaven through the teachings of Jesus or other people? Peace be upon him. Point number three, person who follows the teachings and commandments of Almighty God, then most verily we believe that Jesus was Son of God. But if you mean no, he was the begotten Son of God, then we don't believe in that. Because there's a verse in the Bible, in the Gospel of John, chapter number 3, verse number 16, which says that God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life. Now this verse, if you read the Revised Standard Version, Revised by 32 Christian scholars of the highest eminence, backed by 50 different corporate denominations, they say that this word begotten is an interpolation, is a fabrication, is a concoction, and they've thrown it out of the Bible. So this word begotten is an interpolation. So but naturally we Muslims do not believe that God can beget. So where is the question of Jesus being the begotten son of God? Son of God means godly person, we have got no problem. But we have not kept this attribute. What we believe, that Jesus, peace be upon him, is the messenger of God. And they asked me the question, do you believe that a person can go to heaven with the teachings of Jesus, peace be upon him? At the time of Moses, Moses' teachings took a person to heaven, peace be upon him. At the time of Jesus, peace be upon him, whatever Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, preached, what the teachings of Almighty God, if you follow Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you will go to heaven. But Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, also said in the Gospel of John, it's clearly mentioned in Gospel of John, chapter number 16, verse number 12 to 14, Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now, for he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that dear shall he speak, he shall glorify me. Here Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, is saying that there is another messenger to come. I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot understand them now. When he, when the spirit of truth shall come, talking about Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he shall guide you to the truth. He shall not speak of himself, all that ear shall he speak. Your Prophet, Jesus, peace be upon him, is prophesying of the coming of the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Today, if you want to go to heaven, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And that is not only mentioned in the Quran, it's even mentioned in the Bible, that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said <coughs> that I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. For he, when the messenger of God will come, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he will guide you all truth. So brother, at the time when Jesus Christ, peace be upon his life, you have to follow his teachings. Today, you have to follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that answers the question, brother. Brother, yes. do you believe there is one God? Yes, I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus is God or do you believe Jesus is messenger of God? I believe Jesus to be the son of God. No, fine. Son means a godly person, no problem. But do you believe that he's God himself? Mm, I believe he's the son of God. Not on the same level as God. 
but very uh, good not the same level very good son of god me messenger of god no power do you believe that prophet muhammad is the messenger of god uh, honestly i have not read the quran okay so I, um, what i request I'm you at a disadvantage no but my son gave a talk brother on similarities between islam and christianity he gave so many references from the bible did you hear it or not i've heard it so do you believe in it or not do you believe in the bible yes i do so the bible clearly mentions another messenger is going to come his name is prophet muhammad peace be upon him so when the bible says believe in prophet muhammad why don't you believe i believe that the bible refers to the holy spirit as the messenger no if you read the gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 7 it says that it is expedient for you that i go away jesus christ peace be upon him saying for if i go not away the comforter shall not come for if i depart shall i send him the criteria for the comforter to come is that jesus christ peace be upon him should depart the holy spirit was already there before jesus christ peace be upon him came on this earth the holy spirit was there when jesus was being baptized peace be upon him so how can it refer to the holy spirit the holy spirit appeared with um the apostles they started speaking in tongues no but doesn't the speak. prophecy says only if jesus christ peace be upon him departs will the comforter come so this comforter in no way can refer to the holy spirit how come you're believing in that and you making a mistake i'm believing that the 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 holy spirit appeared after jesus died no no what is the bible says that that means you don't believe in the bible wasn't the holy spirit there at the feast of pentecost when jesus was being baptized wasn't the holy spirit there it mentioned in the bible the holy spirit was there in the womb of the elizabeth yes. brother do you know your bible or not i do so the holy spirit was there before jesus christ came into the earth peace be upon him that means that comforter cannot be the holy spirit right or wrong i cannot confirm or oh, anyway brother go back do your research okay and I try and find out who is this messenger who Jesus Christ peace be referred to, and I pray to Allah that may He guide you to the truth. Thank you. Can we have the next question, brother? Yes, brother. It's our turn. It's our yes. turn. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my name is Burhan Din. I'm an uh, electrical so engineer. Can I have your name? Uh, my name is Burhan Din Abbasi. Uh, I'm an electrical engineering student. Sorry, uh, can you speak a bit slowly and loudly? All right. I would request the the audio tech. Can you increase the volume of my of my microphone i cannot hear my voice can you increase the volume yes volume of the monitor speakers please hello can you increase the, the volume of the monitor speakers audio technician only my monitor speakers please my monitor speakers hear the monitor speakers increase a bit more please increase a bit more okay jazakallah Yes, brother. Can I have your name? Yes, uh, my name is Burhanuddin Abbasi. Burhanuddin. Yeah. Brother Burhanuddin. Yeah. The rule is let the non-Muslim finish the question. Okay, I would like to give a chance for a Muslim that, because we're late, late for that. You have to follow the rule or not? Uh, If actually, someone comes with a heart attack, will I treat the heart attack first, uh, or will I treat the common cold? There is no one beside me in the queue of the Muslim. How, how, how do you know? because i checked uh, already waiting for one hour if no one is on any of the microphone i'll come back and there are other sisters also waiting before I you i mean my question would be straight forward please I'm let the non muslim ask the question are right. there any non muslim on the microphone on the top like number 4 we have okay are there any non muslim on the microphone on the top on my left are there any non muslims no like number 4 we have the non muslim brothers okay are there any non muslims on the microphone on my right on the top maine revert kiya hua hai are there any non muslims pehle thi abhi revert ho chuki hu okay to baad mein puchhenge aapko bhai reverts ko baad mein we'll finish the non muslim yeah. we'll come to the reverts and then we'll come to the muslims yes brother most welcome your name and your profession ji sir assalam alaikum मेरा नाम विशाल कुमार शाह है मैं नेपाल से जनकपुर का रहने वाला हूँ जी सर मेरा क्वेश्चन ये है जो बहुत मुसलमानों भाई बोलते रहते हैं जो मुस्लिम है वो जन्नत में जाएगा है ना नवाज पढ़ता है जो मुस्लिम बन जाता है वो जन्नत में जाता है जो मुस्लिम नहीं है वो जन्नत में नहीं जाता है नवाज पढ़ेगा जन्नत में जाएगा नहीं पढ़ेगा तो नहीं जाएगा
आपका सवाल क्या भाई साहब मुसलमान नमाज रहेगा जन्नत में जाएगा नहीं पढ़ेगा नहीं जाएंगे नहीं 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 बहुत सॉरी बहुत मुसलमानों भाई लोग बोलते रहते हैं आप जोर का बोलेंगे भाई साहब जरा जोर का बुलंदाबाज से हाँ ये बात हुई मैं यहाँ खड़ा हूँ इतने इतने घंटे से बात कर आप थक गए बोलिए भाई साहब जी बहुत मुसलमानों भाई लोग बोलते रहते हैं जो मुसलमान है जो गैर मुस्लिम है वो जन्नत में नहीं जाएंगे जो नवाज पढ़ते हैं वो जन्नत में जाएंगे भाई साहब आपने पूछा है कि जो मुसलमान है जन्नत में जाएंगे नमाज पढ़ते जाने आप भी मुसलमान बनिए आप भी आप भी नमाज पढ़िए आप भी जन्नत में जाएंगे हम हमार नहीं हमारा हमारे हिंदू में भी है बुद्धिस्ट भी है बहुत ऐसा धर्म है जो उसमें बहुत अच्छे मतलब धर्म भी करते हैं आपके हिंदू में लिखा है कि कल क्या होता रहेंगे आपने सुनी मेरी जवाब मैंने जवाब दिया था पहले आदमी को कि आपके हिंदू धर्म के किताब में लिखा हुआ है कि कल की अवतार आएंगे आपने सुने क्या नहीं जिनके वालिद का नाम है अब्दुल्ला जिसके वालदा का नाम है आमिना उनको एक गार के अंदर आया रेवल्यूशन वही आई आपने सुने मैंने कहा था पहले कि आपके धर्म के किताबों में लिखा हुआ है के कल की अवतार आने वाले मोहम्मद सल्लाम कम अज कम सौ जगह लिखे लगे कितने जगह सौ जगह आप मानते मोहम्मद सल्लाम में जी मानते हैं आप मानते हैं मोहम्मद सल्लाम अल्लाह की पैगम्बर है जी मैं एक्सेप्ट किया हूँ आप मानते हैं कि भगवान एक है खुदा एक है मैं मानता हूँ आप मानते हैं कि बुद्ध परस्ती गलत है गलत है मानते गलत है सर क्या बोले एक बुद्ध परस्ती मूर्ति पूजा गलत है आप मानते गलत है माशा आप मानते हैं कि मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर है हाँ है हला सब मुसलमान है मुसलमान होने के लिए दो चीज की जरूरत है पहला एक के मानो के खुदा एक है एक है और बुद्ध परस्ती गलत है पूर्ति पूजा गलत है दूसरी चीज मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर आप मुसलमान है हला नमाज बाद में आएगा पहला मुसलमान तो बनिए जी हमें तो आप देखो मुसलमान बनने के लिए दो चीज की जरूरत है मानना के खुदा एक है हाँ जी बुद्ध परस्ती गलत है पूर्ति पूजा गलत है जी। और मानो के इस भगवान का पैगंबर है मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम ये दो चीज में मानेंगे आप मुसलमान बन गए बाद में आस्ते आस्ते एक बार एडमिशन लो स्कूल में स्कूल में एडमिशन ले लिए आस्ते आस्ते नर्सरी से जूनियर के जी फर्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड सेकेंड स्टैंडर्ड पर एडमिशन तो लो जी हाँ तो मेरे हिसाब से आप दो चीज में मानते उसका मतलब आप मुसलमान है आप बोलना चाहेंगे इसको मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे जी मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है आप जब मानते खुदा एक है आज जब मानते मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर है उसका मतलब आप मुसलमान है जी हाँ कि नहीं जी हाँ तो आप बोलना चाहेंगे अरबी में नहीं तो थैंक्स आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे अरबी में अरबी के अंदर मतलब मेरे नजदीक आप मानते हैं कि खुदा एक है जी। आप मानते हैं कि मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम पैगंबर है जी। ये दो चीज मिनिमम जरूरत है मुसलमान बनने के लिए तो मेरे नजदीक आप मुसलमान है जी। हाँ कि नहीं जी। तो आप अरबी में बोलना चाहेंगे जी मुझे थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए हा? थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए मुझे थोड़ा वक्त चाहिए सोचने के लिए जी ओके बोलेंगे आपको कोई भी जबरदस्ती करे इस्लाम कबूल करने के लिए कोई जबरदस्ती आप अपने दिल से करना चाहते जी। कोई जबरदस्ती नहीं कर रहा है आप अपनी मन से करना चाहते मैं अरबी में कहूँगा आप दोहराइए अशदू मैं अरबी में कहूँगा आप उसे दोहराइए अशदू अल्लाह अल्लाह इलाहा व अशदू अन्ना मोहम्मद अब्दू वो रसूल हो मैं शहादत देता हूँ के अल्लाह के अलावा अल्लाह के अलावा कोई मबूद नहीं कोई मबूद नहीं और मोहम्मद सल्लाम उसके पैगम्बर उसके पैगम्बर और बंदे हैं और बंदे हैं माशा मुसलमान हो चुके मैं अल्लाह से दुआ करूँगा कि आपको भी जन्नत में डाले और एक आदमी जब मुसलमान बनता है उसके पिछले गुना है सब माफ जो अच्छे काम किए वो रहेंगे आपके साथ आपके पूरे पिछले गुना है माफ 
मैं दुआ करता हूँ अल्लाह ताला से कि आपको जन्नत में डाले आस्ते आस्ते इन आप नमाज सीखो आस्ते आस्ते आपके मुसलमान दोस्त है क्या नहीं है क्या नहीं अभी आप मुसलमान दोस्त बोला मैं भी मुस्लिम हूँ बोलो सीना ठोक के बोलना हाँ मैं भी जन्ना जाऊंगा इन इस्लाम के बारे में पता नहीं था सर जी मुझे इस्लाम के बारे में पता नहीं था इस्लाम क्या है मुस्लिम क्या है मुझे ये सब कुछ पता नहीं था मुझे करीबन एक साल से जी हाँ परवे जनसारी जी ने एक साल से उन आपके बारे में बतलाएं आपका ऐसा बहुत वीडियो मैंने देखा बहुत अच्छा लगा वीडियो देखे मेरे अच्छे लगे जी यूट्यूब में देखा फेसबुक में भी देखा माशाल्लाह अभी आप क्या कीजिए आस्ते आस्ते इसके ऊपर अमल कीजिए जी आस्ते आस्ते अमल कीजिए और मैं अल्लाह से दुआ करूँगा कि क्या आपको हिदायत दे आपको सही रास्ता दिखाए और आपको आपको अच्छे तरीके से इस नाम पे अमल करें और मैं दुआ करता हूँ कि आप अपने बाकी दोस्तों को भी ये सही रास्ते पे लेके आए इन शाला I believe there is one God. Do you believe Jesus is God? I believe Jesus is messenger and son of God. Messenger of God, correct. Messenger of God and he is also the son of God. Son of God meaning messenger no problem. But he is not he is not God. My Bible tells me that he is the only begotten son of God. And ah. that is Ah, but if you read as I told you brother Wallace I told you what you are quoting is from the gospel of John chapter number 3 verse number 16 which says for so God for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son whosoever believeth in him shall not die but have everlasting life now if you read the revised standard version of the bible revised by 32 christian scholars backed by 50 different corporate denominations they say this word begotten is interpolation is a fabrication so if you say begotten son it's is a fabrication if you say son of god meaning a messenger of god no problem brother so if you believe is a godly person we verily believe that jesus christ peace be upon him is was the beloved of god but he was not god he was a messenger of god i will beg to differ with you dr naik but uh, i have my reasons okay uh, although that was not my question i have two questions yes sir what's which i want to ask today Yes, you're most welcome. Ask your question. The first question is regarding um, Islam yes, and Christianity. We all know that Christianity began or uh, commenced since 2,000 years ago, as a, well as uh, Islam commenced about 1,400 years ago. Uh, would you be kind enough, sir, to explain to me? or uh, to anyone else who may have doubt how you believe uh, about this period f since the uh, the time of Christ when muslim uh, started do you believe that uh, these people who existed in that time will be judged or uh, they are going to be the same as us who has come after islam the brother asked the question that according to him christianity came 2000 years back and islam came 1400 years back brother you are wrong islam did not come 1400 years back islam is there since time immemorial and prophet muhammad peace be upon him is not the founder of the religion of islam but he is the last and final messenger islam is there right from adam peace be upon him adam abraham noah moses jesus muhammad peace be upon them all so you have a misconception that islam came into existence 14 years ago it's totally wrong quran was revealed 14 years back but islam is there since time memorial at the time of moses if you followed the teachings of moses peace be upon him you would go to heaven at the time of jesus if you followed the teachings of jesus christ peace be upon him you would go to heaven today you have to follow the teachings of the last and final messenger prophet muhammad peace be upon him and that was also meant by jesus peace be upon him as i mentioned my earlier answer in the gospel of john chapter number 16 verse number 12 to 14 jesus christ peace be upon him says 
I have many things to say unto you, but he cannot bear them now. For he, when the spirit of truth shall come, he shall guide you unto all truth. He shall not speak of himself. All that he hears shall he speak. He shall glorify me. So, brother, at the time of Moses, you have to believe in the teachings of Moses, peace be upon him. At the time of Jesus, if you believe in the teaching of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, you are following Islam. Moses was a messenger of Islam. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, was a messenger of Islam. And the last and final messenger was Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hope that clarifies the question, brother. Dr. Zakir Naik, please, can you tell me whether uh, parts of the Bible of which are speaking the truth or there are others which are lying or... I don't understand this, please, sir. You asked the question that can you believe the Bible is lying, speaking the truth, etc. We believe that Injil was the Vahi which was revealed to Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. But the present Bible, it is a mixture. It contains part of the Vahi given by Almighty God to Jesus. It also contains the word of the prophet. It even contains word of historian. And I'm sorry to say, it even contains pornography. So I do not agree the total Bible to be the word of God. It is a mixture. What matches with the Quran, I've got no objection in agreeing that is the word of God. But the Bible even has got pornography. For example, Ezekiel 23. If, I, if you pay me even a million dollars to read Ezekiel 23, I cannot read in the public. It's nothing but pornography. Correct, brother? So I, I do not believe the total Bible is the word of God. The Bible says that Prophet Luth, he did zina, he did incest with his daughter. I cannot believe that a prophet of God can do incest with the daughter. Therefore, everything of the Bible is not the word of God. It is a mixture. It contains the word of God, it contains the word of the prophet, it contains the word of historians, it even contains pornography. My final question, sir. Yes, brother. This is regarding capital punishment. Yes, brother. Of which is illegal in many countries of the modern world. Yes. Uh, this capital punishment, for me, if I would be asked, this is murder. And uh, I to know whether you believe that uh, Allah or my God, of whom I worship and I bow down before, he is the only one who has a right to take life, whether of a sinner or whether of a good person. Because um, I understand, and you earlier mentioned, that it is punishable by death, according to the Holy Quran. The brother said that capital punishment most of the modern country is illegal but in Islam there are certain capital punishment and brother rightly said that only Almighty God has a right to punish. That's the reason only those crimes which Almighty God has given permission to kill is allowed. And I gave you an example that if someone commits rape, there is capital punishment. Brother, I'm asking you the question. Someone rapes your mother. Brother, I'm asking you a question. Someone rapes your mother and the rapist is born in front of you and if you are made the judge, what punishment will you give him? What will you do? I will kill because I'm a human being. Oh, kill. Now you're saying capital punishment wrong. When someone rapes your mother, you want to kill the rapist. Why? Double standards. You are a human being. I'm a human being. Allah is almighty God. He has told that certain crimes which are spreading corruption in the world, like raping, should be put to death. I agree with you. I have asked this question to thousands of non-Muslims. 100% all of them said we will put him to death. Some went to the extent of saying, I will torture him to death. How you said, I will kill him. Right. Correct. You are a human being, I am a human being. How dare somebody rapes your mother or my mother? I agree with you, brother. <coughs> this is the law of God because he is spreading corruption. So in this way, brother, there are certain crimes which Quran and the Sharia gives permission as capital punishment. If it is a punishment from God, we agree with it. You and I cannot put anyone to death unless it is permitted by Almighty God. Hope that answers the question, brother. Thank you so much, sir. You are most welcome, brother. Are there any non-Muslims here? Yeah, my Tell name me. is Nant Kumar. I'm production engineer. Uh, I would request the sound. The sound is very bad. Please could you increase the volume? I'm losing my voice here. I believe Qatar had a very good sound system and they praised it so much. 
I'm speaking for the past more than three and a half hours. Can you increase the volume, please? I request you. Can you increase the volume? Yes. But there's too much of echo. I would request that the monitor speaker should have been brought much more closer to me. The monitor speakers are going in the air. Can you increase the volume and can you make the volume a bit more clear? The audio more clear. Yes. Jazakallah. Yes, brother. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakir. Wa alaikum as uh, My name is Nand Kumar. I'm a petroleum engineer here. I'm from Pakistan. My question is this, that as per Sanatan Dharam, the birth comes after birth. As per uh, the theory that uh, we have to take birth as depending on the karmas and the deeds. We have to take the change clothes. And uh, in, in Hinduism, we are following the same that uh, you are getting a good family, or royal family, or in poor family, or you are disabled from birth, or you are dying in a younger age, depending on the deeds or the karmas of the past birth. What does it uh, show in the Islam? Does it the body is giving the based on the karmas or deeds? If he is uh, getting birth in the royal family, or he is getting birth in the papa, otherwise he is getting uh, disabled in the birth. So what is the drawback of that to get this diet? The brother is asking the question about cycle of birth and rebirth with Islam. If you read in, if you read the Hindu scripture, if you read the Vedas, it talks about punar janam. Punar means next, Last janam time. means life. Even Islam believes in next life. But in the Islam you say brother, the same body will become. Brother, let me complete. You ask the question, correct? Yeah. Let me give the answer. Okay, proceed. I didn't start the answer also in your... Sabar. In Allah ma sabrin. Allah is with those who do sabar. You asked such a long question, I kept quiet. Okay. I am start to give the answer, now you give your comment. So in, in Hinduism, if you read the Vedas, it talks about punar, miss next, Janam means life. Even Quran speaks about next life. Nowhere in the Veda does it speak about death life, death life, death life. Nowhere. It is there in the lower scriptures. I'll come to it later on. In Islam, we believe we come in this world once. After we die, we'll be resurrected in the next life. That's it. Even Veda speaks about Punar Janam. Quran speaks about Punar Janam. But most of the Hindus, they believe in a philosophy called as Samskara. Samskara means a cycle of birth death, birth, death, birth, death, which is not to be found anywhere in the Vedas. We read Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita says that how an old body throws away the old clothes, so will a body take a new body. How a person throws the old clothes and wears new clothes, similarly body will throw away the old soul and take a new soul. Now this is what is said not by the Shruti. Shruti in Hindu scripture means word of God. Smriti means word written by human beings. So nowhere in the Vedas will you find about this concept of cycle of birth and death and birth and death. It is found in the lower scriptures. Now why did the scholars of Hinduism come with a philosophy called a samskara? Because they could not justify that some people are born in the rich family, some people in the poor family, some people are born Hindi, some people are born handicapped. So they could not blame, how can God be unjust? So because they could not justify why some people are born handicapped, some people are born in rich family, some people in poor family, they came with this philosophy that he did some mistake in the Punar Janam, sorry, in the previous life, he did a mistake, therefore he's born handicapped. And they believe that a living creature takes the human form seven times, correct? If you do good deeds, you're born in the higher category, correct? Mm -hmm. Hindu scripture. Okay. Now, brother, I'm asking you a question. Is evil in the world increasing or decreasing? Evil, depending on... Uh, I'm asking you the question today in the world. Is evil increasing or decreasing? Increasing. Ah, what depending? Everyone will say increasing, unless you don't read the newspapers. Increasing, correct? The population of human beings is increasing or decreasing? Increasing. So isn't it contradicting? If, if evil is increasing, population of the world should decrease or not? Because human is the highest form. That is the reason this philosophy is illogical.
No, but in the sense you can do the married life is destroyed. Brother, let me complete my answer. You are asking me questions sometimes in between. No, I am asking you that is increasing or decreasing, you gave the answer. But I am protecting my question. Protecting, okay. How will you protect your question? You are asking the, the human population is increasing. You go in the back the Jurassic uh, area, there are too many animals that is now not in the land. So we have cut all the forests, the jungles is now converting the cities. So these animals, these plants, and these uh, the plants are also the birth. This is also the jannah. So these types of the uh, roots or the souls or the atmas has been uh, generated in the humans and the animals and trees and plants has been eradicated from that. So the plants should become less, the plants are increasing or not? No, plants are getting a cutting, the forest and the jungles is going to be eradicated and they're becoming the cities and uh, villages. Is it increasing or not? Animals are increasing or not as a whole? No, not increasing. Animals are increasing or decreasing, you don't know. Science, you Google. No. You Google. Just and for say, cattles. Just for you are just people. arguing for sake of arguing. Without knowledge. Correct? Without knowledge. Now I am asking you the question. This cycle of birth and death, it is mentioned nowhere in the Vedas. Is it mentioned? Give me reference. No, I am different upon the Shri Bhagavad Gita. But Bhagavad Gita is not a Shruti, it is a Smriti. Which is more higher, Bhagavad Gita or the Veda? Vedas is the, we can say it's the word of the God, the four books. Ah, Bhagavad Gita is not the word of God. Bhagavad Gita is a part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat is the Shruti. It's advice given by Sri Krishna to Arjuna. To Arjun. It is part of Mahabharat. Mahabharat, the word of God, is Mahabharat superior or Veda superior? Veda. Ah, correct. I am quoting from higher scripture, you are quoting from low scripture. So now coming back to it. The scholars of Hinduism could not justify why some human beings are born handicapped, some human beings are healthy. So they came with this philosophy of karma and dharma, mm -hmm. which is not part of the Veda. In Islam, what do we say? That we come in this world as a test for the hereafter. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mul, chapter number 6 and verse number 2, Allah khalakal mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good indeed. <coughs> This life is a test for the hereafter. So we come in this life only once. Now every time the test differs with different people. Some people, Almighty God, gives them wealth. Now when he gives them wealth, he says that you should give zakat. Every rich person who has a saving of more than the nisab level, more than 85 grams of gold, he or she should give 2.5% of that excess wealth in charity. It's called a zakat. So if he gives you wealth, you have to give zakat. If you are poor, you don't have to give zakat. So he makes some people rich and test them, does he give zakat or not? He makes some people poor, they don't have to give zakat. Some people he makes healthy, some people with def heart defects. <coughs> now, Quran says, he has made your children as a test for you. Maybe the parents are very pious. They are praying five times a day. They have a child which is born with congenital heart disease. God wants to check them by giving them a test. Do they yet believe in God or not? The person who has which congenital defect, he has done no sin. It is wrong to say that a child is sinful. Why? In Islam, we believe every child is born as sinless. How can I be irresponsible? So in Islam, People are born in rich family and poor family as a, as a test. They are born healthy or with a defect as a test. Depending upon the test, for example, if in an examination the question paper is very difficult, the correction is lenient, correct? Mm -hmm. If the question paper is easy, the correction is stricter. So depending upon the facility Almighty God has given you, this life is a test for the hereafter. So it is illogical to say that we have been born handicapped because we did a sin in the last life. Illogical. Okay, yeah, just That's the reason in Islam, this life is a test for the hereafter. Same what is mentioned in the Veda. So Quran matches with the Veda. What is mentioned in the other scripture is not matching with the Veda. That is the reason I discarded. Hope that answers the question. Okay, just uh, in addition of this one. Uh, just like a baby is for nine months and uh, by birth he's uh, I dead. can't understand. Speak slowly, clearly and loudly. A baby just of nine months by time of birth he got died. Sorry? Uh, by birth 
a baby of nine months, he got died, he birth or died baby. So in that case, so he is going to be a uh, day of judgment or he has... Uh, On no the day of judgment, he'll go to heaven. Direct to heaven? Direct. What mistake has he done? But he has suffered nine months in the Kundi Bakhnar, just in the birth. Therefore, he'll get heaven. In the nine months he suffered, therefore, he'll get heaven. Alhamdulillah. What's the problem? Good, no? Only nine months. Nine months even you suffered and I suffered. Right or wrong? Right. Now we are ready for him. Jannah. For you and I, God will check whether you did good or right. God will ask you. You attended the lecture of Dr. Zakir Naik. Did you agree with him or not? God will ask you. Yeah, yeah. If you pass the test, Jannah. If you don't pass the test, hell. If the baby got saved. What about you? What about you? I will be considered in account based on my deeds. Ah, so what is your deed? I am talking so much logically so, so now. One thing Do you believe there is one God? I believe in one God. Do you believe idol worship is wrong? It's wrong. Okay. But Do you let believe me, Prophet? Let, let me answer one thing just before yes. this. Do you believe Prophet one? Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, as per the Buddha, as per the Vedas, is a Muhammad is prophet. Yeah. Allah. So if you believe in these two things, just one you, thing. Just to proceed before that. I am giving you ticket. You are giving me ticket. <laughs> Who is liable to? Because uh, just uh, as per the Bhagavad Gita, the soul is the power, just need to be transferred. He has to be faced for the every result. And, uh, the, uh, and based on your just previous lectures, you told that the time of judgment, the same body will be reincarnated and they will be just like fingerprint will be the same. And uh, based by my understanding from our religion, that the soul is, will be transferred and at the time of judgment, uh, the soul will be liable to be punished or rewarded. That's what you are saying. Yeah, that's not your from, Veda, not the Veda. What? That's from time to tell you that if there's a contradiction between a higher scripture and lower scripture, which will you follow? If there's a contradiction but, between Quran wait, and the Hadith, wait. I will say Hadith is Zaif Hadith. But Veda doesn't, hadith. Veda doesn't say that the, the physical body will be reoriginated back. Veda says there is Punar Janam, that's it. The Veda doesn't say there is death, life, death, life. That is what is said otherwise. So, what, is, what, says, does Islam, what does Islam say about soul? Is Islam says in the soul, the, the Islam says that once a person dies, his body dies, he'll be resurrected, Punar Janam, like the Veda. In the, and then there'll be Isab Kitab. Do you Isab do good Kitab deal? will be liable for the soul or the bad body? Soul and body both. Both? Yes, the soul will go back into the body. Both. So the, that's the reason when someone asked in my lecture, I said, how will Almighty God be able to reconstruct the bone? The answer is there, Allah will not only reconstruct the bone, He will reconstruct in perfect order the tip of the finger. Didn't I say that in my lecture? Yeah, yeah. So the body would be resurrected. The body after we die, the soul, body both will be resurrected on the day of judgment and then there will be a final judgment that is your good deeds more or bad deeds more? If your good deeds are more, then you'll go to Jannah, inshallah. And what will be the condition if he dies around 80s year and old and someone has died in the Irrespective of whatever age he dies, he will not have the same thing here. It will be different. It will not be the same body like yours and mine. It will be different. You can't say a person died at the age of 80 will be rejected at the age of 80. If a person dies at the 8 month, not 8 month, it will be altogether different. But a body would be there. You understand? Yeah. It will be different. It will not be like you and me, how we are. But the I next life would be a different life altogether. But in uh, schools, I have studied in the Islamic schools in Pakistan, that uh, have heard that uh, in the Day of Judgment, your hand will spoke that this hand has been did mistakes by his, uh, his, yes. his eyes will speak. So yes. the same eyes will be, the, uh, as per this statement, not this, the same body will be re regenerated. And you are asking your, now... Your, the Quran and the Hadith does mention that your organs will be witness against you. Yeah. If you hide something, your eye will give yeah, it this. You did this. Whether you did good deed or bad deed. Uh, so there's no problem at all. Your me, organs will be witness. It me. would not be the same like this. For example, if you tell me, oh, in the heaven, then after the age of 100, I'll die. No. It's different. Here you require to eat, there it is different. Your body would be there. How it would be? Allah alam. You understand? It will be there. How? We don't know. It will be somewhat different. 
but that life will be eternal life. Like our life is limited. Some live for the age of 60, some 80, some 100, but that life will be eternal. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you believe there's one God? God is one, yeah. Sorry? One God. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yes. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes. So these are the minimum two things required for anyone to enter the fold of Islam. Believe one God? And uh, Yeah, just uh, you are giving me a ticket now, huh? Not ticket. Yeah, not ticket. Please, yeah, you are giving me a ticket, but what about... I am giving you direction, not ticket. Direction is the ticket no, is the wrong word. I am just following direction. the statement that you given just before. Once someone has uh, confessed the Islam, his previous deeds has been cut off and deleted off. Yes, not the future, the past. Past. Not the future. So what about his uh, previous deeds? Uh, he has uh, uh, did a major kabira guna, just he has... Uh, Whatever he has done, whether he had alcohol, no. whether he raped, whether he committed murder, it was done in why, ignorance. Why, why does Islam say that there's blood yes. in the face why? of mother? Why? Because that time he did not agree with the law of Almighty God. He did not know that murder is wrong. He did not know that uh, raping a girl is wrong. He did in the ignorance. Now, if you do something in the ignorance, Allah forgives you. That is the reason when a person accepts Islam, whatever bad deed he does is washed away. It was done in ignorance. Now, today, you agree there is one God. Today, you agree Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Yesterday, you did not agree. So today when you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God and there is one God, you have to follow the rules and regulation. All your previous sins are forgiven. This is good. Why should God hold you responsible for something you didn't agree previously? So God is Rahman or Rahim, is merciful. Your previous sins are forgiven, now a new account starts. All the good things that you did will remain, all your sins would be forgiven and you enter a new life. So would you like to enter a new life? But even, even in the new life, there are the 72 sects and from that only one will go to the Jannah. There is no 72 sects. Just I uh, have heard in that... Uh, oh, that is, there's a hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There will be 73 sects. Yes. Quran said don't make sects. You don't follow any sect. You only follow Quran and say hadith. If you follow Quran and say hadith and do not make sects, you'll go to Jannah. The moment you start making sects, then there is a problem. But what you have to do is read the Quran, follow the Quran, read the Sahih Hadith, and follow the Sahih Hadith. And this group that follows the Quran and the Sahih Hadith go to Jannah. The moment you deviate, I want to follow this human being, I want to follow that human being, then you start deviating. So which sect do you name this one, follow the Hadith and Quran? Islam, Muslim. There is no Shia Sunni. In the Quran, show me one word which says Shia Sunni. Where does it say? Why are these? Why these are different sects? That's what I'm asking they you. They have the one Quran, they have one God, they have one Correct. Prophet. All is the one. These then why are, are 72? Deviations. Based on? Based on their own thinking. Why they are not Muslims? If they deviate from the Quran, they are not. Even they are Muslims, they are deviated in between themselves. That then how they are that? deviated Muslims. They aren't practicing Muslim. If you deviate, then you are deviated Muslim. You point out anything from the Quran, I will follow it. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter 6, verse 158, 159. Anyone who makes sex in the religion of Islam, oh, Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. So making sex is haram. Anyone makes division, it is prohibited in the Quran. You ask me, what am I? I'm a Muslim. What am I? Muslim. Quran says, call a innani minal muslimin. In no less than 20 places. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. It doesn't say Shia Sunni. Those persons no, who say I, I they are Shia. Know, but these names coming from Islam. Who has generated Not from these, Islam. Who has they, generated these names, these sects? You ask them who's saying that. I'm not saying. You are the leader, the scholar of the Muslim. I'm telling you, it is not there in the Quran. Do I call myself Shia? No. I call myself Muslim. So you are asking me, somebody else says two plus two is equal to five. Brother Zakir, why is he saying two plus two is equal to five? I go and ask him, I did not say it. If I ask them, they will convince me. As I, to th that sect, they I ask them to give reference from the Quran. You are intelligent or not? 
Ask them which verse of the Quran says call yourself Shia. Ask them. Simple. Quran says, Kul hasu burhanakum. Produce your proof, but if you're truthful. Very easy. Anyone takes you for a ride, ask for the reference. The reason people like my lecture is because they come in the question and answer session. I give the Hindus the reference. They go and ask the Pandit. There is the reference. Oh, Majja or Shaitan. <laughs> what Shaitan? I'm giving reference. You come and tell me, Zakir, I'm wrong. I will change. Right or wrong? There is no verse. Ma I'm telling you to accept Islam, not Shiaism. Accept, follow Quran and say Hadith. Not some other shaykh. Don't follow Zakir also. Zakir in Islam is zero. No, I have been uh, mingled with Muslims many sects. No, no, mingle, so mingle. The sect. style of Salawat is different, different styles of. That is all nonsense. Don't follow Zakir also. Follow Quran and follow Say Hadith. If you follow Quran and Say Hadith, Inshallah, you will go to Jannah. I am unable to swim. You are asking me to jump in the mid. How swim I can I? swim? Who's asking you to jump? No, read Quran. <laughs> This is life boy, this, you know, this, this you know life, life, lifeguard. lifeguard okay. If I'm going to, if I'm going to ask you to jump with a life vest, will you jump or not? The shark can come. Huh? Shark. No, no, this is the life vest. The life vest will float only. Bas, khalas. What more do you want? You want to jump? No. This is, what do you, are they, when you jump with water, what do you want to do? Float and then come to the shore. Come to the shore or the life uh, rescue team. Or what? Or a life res rescue team. Life? Rescue team. Yes. This is sufficient. This is the key to all the problems. This Quran is the solution to the problems of humankind. The problem is you don't want to listen to this, you want to listen to other human beings. In my lecture, so, I only quoted from Quran or not. Uh, Dr. Zak, this is just on Many scholars in all sects, they are many learned and very. Uh, no learned scholar. Which learned May, scholar I, I will just start to read this one. How I will be able to get the right direction from this one? From which one? From I prove to you today that Quran is the word of God. Right or wrong? Quran is? The word of God. Did I prove yeah, or not yeah, today? Yeah, you yeah. prove. Haras, follow the Quran. Forget Zakir Naik. Forget Zakir Naik. Sir. Follow the Quran. Forget the other people. Anyone who says. Anything which matches with the Quran, follow it. Doesn't match, throw it away. <laughs> Even tomorrow, if I say something wrong against the Quran, throw it away. Dr. Zakir is zero in Islam. Correct? Okay, you're right. What is number one Quran? Quran is only one. Sorry? Quran is only one for all. Only one. It, no Quran. Quran doesn't differ at all. So why are these sects are different? That is what I'm trying to tell you. They are taking different translation from this one? No, they are deviating. They are putting their own things. Like how Hindus put their own things, even Muslims put their own things. Correct? That's the reason when we come here, we say, Kul hatu burana, kum produce your proof, but if you're truthful, in kuntum sadikin. So the problem is, we have the open question answer session, even to guide the Muslims. They are believing in this scholar, they are believing in that scholar. You follow Quran and say hadith, khalas. If the scholar says something which matches with the Quran and say hadith, you agree with it. If it doesn't match, you throw it away. Right or wrong? Right. So easy. So you believe there's one God? Yeah, God is one and... Uh, and you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Yes. So why don't you take entry into the school? <coughs> I, don't I jump, will, take entry. I will get into the, through the Quran and I will check uh, and uh, just uh, going through the... If I am... Uh, no, no, follow the Quran. I'm not trying to follow anything else. The Quran says there is one God. I gave you the reference. Chapter number 112, verse number 1 to 4, right? Yeah. Quran says, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of God. Surah Azab chapter 33, verse number 40. Ma kana Muhammadun abba adim min jalukum, walakhi rasulallah, wa khatam in nabin, wa kana law bi kullayshin alima. That Prophet Muhammad is not the father of any of you men, but is the messenger of Allah. He is the seal of the Prophet. Allah is all knowing, full of knowledge. Who was this? Alas. How much time it takes to read? With reference. How much time? How much time it takes to understand this? Two verses only of the Quran. God is one. And the definition of God Surah Ikhlas, which I said in my lecture. And Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. These two are the two fundamentals for any human being to enter the school of Islam. 
Once you enter, slowly, slowly, you go from junior KG, senior KG, first standard, second standard. At least enter. Getting admission is the main important thing. If you don't get admission, then where you, you keep on going to the school, round and round the school, what do they use? You don't get this opportunity always. You have been asking so long, see? The longest. Uh, just uh, when I was in primary school, the Muslims, uh, friends of me, just asking from the primary, they just come to Islam, just come to Islam. And uh, there was a ayat, the Safai Nisfaiman. There is no ayah Safai Nisfaiman. I, I, I challenge you. So why, why you call it? There is schools? no ayah that cleanliness is half the deen in the Quran. There is no ayah. So it's, a, it's a written because on the Because you were a kid that time. You did not ask them for reference. Now you ask them for reference. There's no if, if someone misguided you when you were in the school, what do you do? Now you get matured. Mm -hmm. Correct? There is no text in the Quran which says cleanliness is half the deen. In Sahih no Bukhari? Text. It is not there in the Quran. In Sahih Bukhari? It is a saying. No, not even Sahih Bukhari. It's not there. MashaAllah, you know Bukhari. Tirmidhi. It's not there in Tirmidhi also. Not in Sita. It's not then Kutubu Sitta also. There's no Siya Sitta. There's only there's no Siya Sitta in Islam. There's Kutubu Sitta in Islam. Siya Sitta means six authentic books. There are only two authentic books, Bukhari and Muslim. It is a saying. It is a saying. Kahawa, you know Kahawat? You know saying? No, but it's like for Sai Bukhari in Pakistan, we say the Sai Bukhari Bade Kitab Bari. Are Bade Kitab, but it is not then Sai Bukhari also. You're smiling, Vaisha. Okay. This is, that's the reason, always ask for proof. It's a very common saying that cleanliness is half the deen. It is a saying. It is not even part of anywhere in the Quran, neither any Sahih Hadith. It is a saying. Right or wrong is secondary. Correct? Correct. So don't get misguided. Mm -hmm. Enter the correct school, okay. Quran. Agreed. MashaAllah. So you want to enter the school? Enter the school. And then follow it. In, enter the student and leave the scholar. Leave, leave the scholar. If the scholar matches with the school, follow it. If the scholar takes you away, leave him. Right or wrong? Nice. Right. So, so what do you like to say it in Arabic? You're from Pakistan, MashaAllah. You know Bukhari, Tirmezi, all these people who gave Shahada, they don't know that. So much you have studied, MashaAllah. You want to say the Shada? MashaAllah, MashaAllah. You want to say the Shada? Inshallah. MashaAllah. So you believe there's one God? And ah. you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger? Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? My inner sense, just I have, I have uh, see, I have much is any, is anyone, my family, see. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? I myself, I'm not accepting now. Not accepting now? No. But now he said Inshallah. Inshallah means I have to go through the Quran. I have not seen this uh, in detail. Okay, I will, fine. And you are briefing these ayatas and... Uh, so okay, you are from Pakistan. I know Pakistan is very difficult. It's difficult, huh? Huh. India, Pakistan. <laughs> no, no, Pakistan. Anyway, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May he give you hidayah. Inshallah. And may he guide you to the true part, inshallah. inshallah. And we have the next question. Thank you. Thank you, Rakhine. Are there non-Muslims on the top? Are non-Muslims on the microphone on the top? On the beach side. On the beach side. Wait, we'll come to the beach afterwards. Are there non-Muslims on the microphone on the right top? Non-Muslims? Non-Muslim. Non reverted. Uh, revert afterwards, inshallah. We'll come back to you. Allah. Yes, brother. <laughs> we'll come back. You're next in the queue. Inshallah, we will not end the session without taking your question. Hello, sir. Uh, while your son was speaking here, a question came to my mind. He was telling about the similarities between Moses and Muhammad, that there are many more similarities between them, such as being born in a natural way, uh, have died uh, for a natural cause, and have raised family. And there are many more similarities between these two, uh, this, and Moses and Muhammad, than Moses and uh, Jesus. Because Jesus was not uh, born in a natural way, he was not uh, died in a uh, natural cause, okay? So uh, aren't these similarities or uh, proofs that Jesus was in fact the son of God? 
or more than a prophet? Brother, ask you a question based on the speech of my son. Yeah. Brother, if you know the context, what my son was quoting is a prophecy in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 18, verse number 18, which says, which says that I shall raise thee up a prophet. Almighty God is telling Moses, peace be upon him. I shall raise thee up a prophet from among thy brethren, like unto thee, and I shall put my words into his mouth, and he shall command all that I say. So here, the Christian missionaries say that this prophecy refers to Jesus, peace be upon him. So we are defending and saying this prophecy does not refer to Jesus, peace be upon him, because Jesus was not a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. Jesus was a Jew, peace be upon him, Moses was a Jew. For a brethren, you have to be children of the brothers, cousins. So the Arabs are cousins of Jews. So Prophet Muhammad was a brethren of Moses, peace be upon him. It should be like Moses, and you rightly said, Moses had a natural birth, Muhammad had a natural birth, peace be upon them. Jesus Christ had an unnatural birth. Moses, peace be upon him, died a natural death. Muhammad died a natural death, peace be upon him. Jesus Christ did not, peace be upon him. So he's unlike, doesn't make him God. It does not make him fulfill the prophecy. But do you, you understand? Does, Muslim, uh, does Islam uh, believe about the miracles that Jesus performed? Of course such, we believe. Such as walking on uh, water, such as healing a uh, sick person. Many, not all. Walking on water is not mentioned in the Quran, but I told you in my talk, we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. We believe that. Yes, but uh, uh, these miracles, you were telling me that they are not on your Quran, but they are in the Bible. So no, they are in the Quran. Be... This is in the Quran, what I told you. No, what I told you about walking on uh, on. Uh, Are which is the bigger miracle? Giving life to the dead is bigger miracle, or walking on the earth is bigger miracle? On the water, which is bigger? It's written there. No, which is bigger miracle? Giving life to the dead is a bigger miracle, or walking on the water is a bigger miracle? Which is a bigger miracle? Sorry. Which is a bigger miracle? I'm giving life to the dead or walking on the water? Given life to a dead. When I, when I believe in the bigger miracle, why are you running after the small miracle? I don't understand the logic. I believe, but I always said, all these miracles are done with the permission of God. The miracle does not make you a prophet of God. Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, said, it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 24, verse number 24, for there are many false Christ and false prophets who will come and will deceive the very elect. So miracle is not the test. All these miracles were done by Almighty God. That does not make Jesus Christ peace be upon him God. If Moses parted the sea, does that make Moses God? Does that make Moses God? Not more than God, but his son. Moses is the son of God. Yeah. Where does Jesus. it say in the Bible? From Jesus. He was son of God. Moses was son of God? No, Moses no, he was a prophet. Moses parted the sea. Does it make him God? Adam, peace be upon him, was, Moses was born without a father, correct? Adam was born without father and mother, does it make him God? No. This is a miracle. If you say Jesus is God because he had no father, Adam is a bigger God, peace be upon him, he had no mother and no father. All this is not the test. Do you understand? These are miracles done by the prophets of God, done by God. To prove that they are messengers. Right or wrong? Then you have to say Adam is a bigger God. Right or wrong? Do you believe Adam is a bigger God? I'm sorry? Do you believe Adam is God? Adam? Is God? No. Even I don't believe. Peace be upon him. Just because he did a miracle, that does not make him God. Why? Yeah. That's the reason they were all messengers of God. But not God. Thank you. Good. So now you believe Jesus is the messenger of God? Both the uh, messenger of God and son of God. No, son of God, again, the son of God, God has got son by the tongue. Ephraim is son of God. Israel is son of God. As many are led by the spirit of God, the sons of God. God has got son by the tongue in the Bible. 
but none of them, the previous prophets, uh, they are mentioned in the Bible as having come from the, uh, from the paradise, as Jesus was. Such, such as uh, John 6, 23. That he was, he came, uh, he came before so, Adam. So, so all the other prophets came from hell? No, Jesus was existing before Adam. That's what we, uh, we believe. Everyone in, in the Bible, it says, everyone was present in the plan of God before they came. Even no, you were present in existing. Even you were existing, even I was existing, correct? That does not mean you and me, God. Everyone was existing in the plan of God. That's what the Bible says. Everyone was existing in the plan of God before we came in this world. That does not make you and me God. But existing in his plan, not in reality. He was already existing with God. That's Where does it say? Give me the reference. John uh, 6, 23 and... What does it say? Mm -hmm. What does it say? What does John chapter 16, verse 23 say? Tell me. That he, he came from God, that's why he... He, he came from God. Time. Everyone came from God. Even you and I came from God. But he came from... Uh, we didn't come, I mean, from the heaven, you know. So he maybe came you came from, from hell? Heaven. No, 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 no. You came from hell? But we, came, we are humans. We are human. All of us are creations of Almighty God. There's not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God of Isis, worship me. You point out a single unequivocal statement. A single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says, I am God, or where he says, worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. But he says he was son. He says with his words, he was son. He says. Are, you are, I think you don't understand English. Ephraim is son of God. Abraham is son of God. Does that make them God? But some, but they had, I mean, they had a natural mother and father. Adam? And he natural mother have, and father. He didn't have, but Jesus existed before him. Adam was son of God is mentioned in the Bible. What are you going to do? No, but he didn't say it. Who didn't say it? He didn't say it. What did not say? Adam didn't say it, you know. But what Jesus, he did not Bible say? Bible is written that, that he came. That he what you're talking, there is not a single unequivocal statement. Do you understand English, brother? Yeah. Which country do you come from? Huh? Which country do you come from? Brazil. Brazil. Yeah. There is not a single unequivocal statement, not a single unambiguous statement, anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon himself, says that I am God, I am God, three words, or where he says, worship me, two words. You point out anywhere in the Bible, I am ready to accept Christianity. You are beating around the bush, son of God. Many people are son of God. You are beating around the bush. You are beating around the bush. Did you hear my I, I got challenge? You, I got you. I got you. My yes. challenge is unequivocal statement. You got it? Yeah. Unambiguous. I am God. How many words? Three words. Three words yes. Worship me. Two words. I accept Christianity. Okay. Nowhere in the Bible. All this what you are saying is beating around the bush, which has been sent to many other people also. You understand? Yeah. So yeah. want to go and study the Bible, do research and come to the truth. Thank you. You are most welcome. Can we have questions from the beach, please? Hello? Yes. Hello? Can we have the questions from the beach? Hello? Yes, brother, Hello? most welcome. Hello? Yes, brother, we can hear you. Can the sound person increase the volume, please? The sound technician. The sound technician, please, could you increase the volume of the... It is not your fault, it is the fault of the technician. The sound technician, can you increase the volume of the microphone on the beach? Hello? Yes, brother. Hi, sir. Good evening. Uh, Good evening, brother. My name is Neeraj. I am from India. Yes, brother. Sir, I am a big fan of yours. MashaAllah. Very good. I love you, brother. Yes, brother. What's your question? I saw your all debate, uh, huh? uh, which you did uh, with all scholars uh, in India. So I really inspired from your uh, uh, speech. Did you watch the debate with Shishi Ravi Shankar? Yeah, sir. I, I, did you watch the debate with Shishi Ravi Shankar? Yeah, sir. I, I saw. I saw. That. How did you like it? Oh, sir, it was very awesome, sir. I awesome. Really, yeah, sir. I really inspired from that debate, and I need to convince. Uh, I, I convinced from that debate, and I really. 
I need to convert, I need to revert myself. Mashallah, brother, do you believe there is one God? Yes, sir, I do believe. Brother, do you believe that idol worship is wrong? Uh, yes, sir, I do believe that uh, idol worship is wrong. Do you believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sir, Prophet Muhammad is the Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God? Yes, sir, I do believe. Brother, is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, sir, it's my wish. Is anyone forcing you to accept Islam? No, sir. It's Are you doing own. out of your own free will? Yes, sir, I am doing all. Inshallah, I'll just say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Yeah. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abduhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God. There is no God. But Allah. But Allah. And I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad is the messenger, is the messenger and servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. Mashallah, become Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He grant you Jannah. May He forgive all your sins. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may He guide through you the other people more to the religion of truth. Thank you, thank you, so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, brother. Can we have the next question from the beach? Are there any brothers? or sisters on the beach would like to ask a question who are non-Muslims. Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, there are no non-Muslims on the beach. Uh, okay, no non-Muslim. We'll, we'll, we'll check if there are non-Muslims here. Muslim. 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 Are there any non-Muslims here on this microphone? Muslim. Are there any non-Muslims on the top? No, no non-Muslims. Are there any non-Muslims on the right? No, that's... Are there any non-Muslims here? Any non-Muslims? Non Muslim, yes, brother, come in the front. You can break the queue. Hello, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I, my doubt is in this live session, I have seen nearly six to seven non Muslim brothers, they are accepting this Shahada, right? In front of you. And they have been, you have been making them to read the Shahada. Okay? Now they were accepting. It means they are getting into the Islam education school. Yes. Okay? Then after, they were not practicing. So, what would be the final result? If they were accepting the Shahada, then after there is no practice. It means proper practice. So what would be the, the final result at the last day of judgment for them? Whether the Allah is going to punish them without practicing, you have just, uh, in front of Jagan Nahak, you have uh, accepted the Islam's La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. So this question may be raised, I think so. Right? The brother asked a very good question that he has seen about seven or eight people accepting Islam. Yeah. I think there are seven or eight. First was four, I think there were eight. Eight people who accepted Islam. Yeah. And they said the Shahada, what if they don't practice? Yeah. Brother, why are you being a pessimist? Be optimist. What if they practice? La ilaha illallah, no. Muhammadur Rasulullah. No, I am asking the question. Sorry? I that am. I am telling you. Okay. Why are you a pessimist? Pessimist means? Sorry? A pessimist. Do you know the meaning of pessimist? No, sorry. You just pessimist means a person who thinks negative. Okay. Why don't be an optimist? Okay. You should say, what if they practice Islam? Inshallah, they'll practice Islam. Okay. Coming to your question. What if someone takes the shahada in front of me? Taking shahada in the front of me is no benefit. Yeah. Whether you take in front of me, behind me, taking shahada is important. If you take in front of Dr. Zakir Naik, no extra marks. Okay. Dr. Zakir Naik, zero in Islam. Okay. Taking is important. Whether in front of me or in front of you, no problem. Point number one. Point number two, that... If they practice Islam, inshallah they'll go to Jannah, without doubt. What if they don't practice Islam? Chances are how much? Theory of probability, 50-50, correct? Okay, yeah. 50-50, Yeah, 50-50. Toss the coin, yes or no, 50-50. Hypothetically, they don't practice Islam. Okay. If they practice 50% Jannah? Yeah, 50% done. 50% Jannah also, Alhamdulillah. Better okay. than going to Jannah, point okay. number one. I'm coming to your question, wait. Maximum, minimum chance is 50. So I'm telling, if this person doesn't take Shada, if you don't take Shada, what will happen? Jannah. If you take 50%, 50% Jannah. You know the Quran says on the day of judgment, the non-Muslim will say, we would not mind giving you the full wealth of this world, give us Jannah. Jannah is more valuable than the full world. Correct? Yeah. No, full world you are getting 50%. What a great deal. Right or wrong? Right. 
If I tell you I'll give you a million dollar, what do you stay awake full night, na? <laughs> million dollar, six crore rupees, seven crore. Yeah. What will you do? You stay awake full night, na? Yeah. So this is much more than billions and trillions of dollars. Now coming to your question. If the person practice Islam 50%, inshallah go to Jannah. If he doesn't practice, if the person doesn't practice yet, if he does not do shirk, and if he believes there is one God, okay. and if he believes Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of God yet, high chances he will go, but he will go late. If he doesn't practice well, he will go to hell first. Okay. Maybe it's still punishment. But if he doesn't do shirk, Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 48, and Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 116, if Allah wishes, he may forgive any sin, but the sin of shirk, he will never forgive. That means, if he accepts Islam, he drinks alcohol, and he gambles, and he cheats, maybe little days he'll go to hell, get some punishment, maybe God will take him out and put him in hell after that. Other people who do shirk, 100%, forever, in nar, in hell. Yet it's a good deal, right or wrong? Yeah, right, sir. So, do you believe there's one God? Yeah. Do you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger yeah. of God? Yes? Yeah. Would you like to say the Shada? But, but, sir, one second. One but second. you have to believe in it, huh? Yeah, if sir. you say only to fool me, wait, wait, wait. Okay. If someone says, okay, Allah, Muhammad, Rasulullah, he doesn't believe. God knows, I will not know. God knows, then no Jannah. Okay. You actually have to believe there's one God. You actually have to believe idol worship is wrong. See, that's the reason a brother, he said, he wants to accept Islam, correct? Yeah. And then he said that, I believe Jesus is God. I didn't give him shahada. Did you notice that? Yeah. Ah, that means I'm not just counting. <laughs> because he said, no, I believe Jesus is God. Okay, Jesus is God, that means you cannot become a Muslim. Even if you give me a million dollars, I will not give him shahada, correct? Yeah. That means I'm not just, I'm listening. Now, if someone cheats me and tells me a lie, Allah, Allah. I cannot go into his heart and check. Okay. I'm, so, you have to really believe there's one God. You have to believe that idol worship is wrong. You have to believe that Prophet Muhammad is the messenger. Then if you don't follow yet, there are chances you'll go to Jannah. Good bargain. There are many Muslims who are doing wrong things. Yeah. But they are not good Muslims. Maybe they will never enter Jannah. I don't know Allah. Wallam. But they can yet go. But if you die as a mushrik, if you die doing shirk, 100% hellfire. No option at all. And one more thing, sir. You have informed uh, just before the session, uh, one of my <laughs> non-Muslim brother has uh, speak to you, that you have asked the question him. In our Vedas, it was mentioned that the Prophet Muhammad will be coming back, right? So he had accepted that, yes, I accept that our Vedas, uh, my, our Vedas is accepting the thing. So you told that if you are accept the thing, it means that you are accepting that uh, Allah is one, it, it means the God is one, Correct. and the Muhammad Prophet is the one only messenger. Correct. So then after you have told that, if you are accepting the same thing, then I am and you are the same one. Correct. Right? Basic thing the same, Basic not totally. Thing, right? Correct. Okay. If we two are same, then what there is a difference between worshipping in, uh, in that way and worshipping ah, in this way, what is the difference? Very good question. Now, many Hindus, they say, believe in Veda, but they don't know Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the Veda, correct? Right, okay. So actually, they are not practicing Hindus. The okay. many Christians say, I love Jesus. I love Jesus more than them. I'm circumcised. They are not circumcised. Jesus said, don't have alcohol. Peace be I don't have alcohol. They have alcohol. The Bible says, don't have pork. I don't have pork. They have pork. I am more Christian than the Christians themselves. I love Jesus. Peace be upon him. They are all fake. All fake, right or wrong? Now, I told you I'm a Hindu. Yes. Hindu means coming from the land of Indus Valley. Geographical definition, yes. right or wrong? Right or right. Not a religious definition. Yeah. Religious definition is another term. Now, I tell them that why don't you believe your Veda? I don't agree. I don't agree everything of the Veda to be the word of God. But the Hindu believes. So I tell, let us agree what's coming. Quran says believe in one God, Veda says believe in one God. Quran says don't do idol worship, Veda says don't do idol worship. Quran says believe in Prophet Muhammad, Veda says let us agree. Now, previously you were a Hindu not knowing that Veda says believe in Prophet Muhammad. Now you know, now we are together in one part, main part. Okay. Now once you say you believe Prophet Muhammad is a messenger, you have to follow the message, right or wrong? Right. 
But if, one more thing. No, no. So when you believe in the message, what is the message? Go on. I don't know. Right. So indirectly, I'm telling them, your Veda is telling, come close to Quran. Your Bible is telling, come close to Quran. Right or wrong? Right. I'm not criticizing the Veda. I'm not criticizing. I can. I can give a lecture if my son gave for one or ten minutes similarities. I can give five hours on dissimilarities, differences. Okay. If I can give a lecture three hours on similarities in Islam and Hinduism, I can give five hours on differences between Islam and Hinduism. But I don't want to create fight. I love my Hindu brothers. I love my Christian brothers. Okay. That's the reason people hear my talk. And many of them accept. Some of them don't like me. Okay. But did I love them? Yeah. So, brother. Fine, sir. The thing is, right now I can't uh, read this Shahada because I am getting the teachings about the Quran. From three months since I have been reading this Quran. Very good. With one of my colleagues. Two of them are uh, right now, they are here. Hmm. So, I want to fulfill the total Quran, then after I will... Total Quran you cannot fulfill, brother. No, it means... No I, Muslim I can mean say, I, I follow 100%. Even I cannot say, I am a, I am a human being. The 100%... Is, I am not saying that I want to one, fulfill Quran. I want one, to read it completely. I want yeah. to know every point, what it has been mentioned. Brother, how long will you live? How long? How long means, will you live? I can't tell you the correct one. Suppose right? if I tell you, if I tell you there is a deal, Okay. Of one million dollar, tell okay. me yes or no within one hour. What will you do? What will you do? For life, you know, they let me do research for one month, one hour, yes or no, million dollar gone. What do you do? This is not million dollars, this is trillions of dollars. Okay, and see, good. I don't know how long will I live. I don't know whether I'll go back to Bombay or not. Correct? Yeah, right. Even you don't know. Once you're convinced, accept it. If you like this school, is good, you enter the school. You don't say, I'll do research. What research? By the time you grow old, you will not be able to enter the school. Correct? Then right. you have to go to university. Whether three months. Three months. Without act, it means without any fulfillment about any... No, two, no, two fulfillment. No, no, no that, that is not... Two I'm not fulfillment speaking about of that type of fulfillment. Okay? Two you fulfillment have already informed, you just check with the Islam. What is the Islam? I want to understand what type... What was mentioned? What is there inside? See, once you accept in these two things, you do tell, you know hundred things about Islam. You follow eighty and don't follow twenty, no problem. Okay, it's not a, it's not a problem for me to reach her. You know, there was a girl in Japan. Okay. There was a girl in Japan, and she told me, Brother Zakir, I cannot give up pork. I said, Well, I love it. Can you give up alcohol? She says yes. She was wearing a scarf. I said, why wearing a scarf? No, my Muslim friends wear a scarf. I like it. Do you believe in one God? She said, yes. Do you believe in Pope Muhammad? She said, yes. I said, give the shahada. Continue eating pork. People were shocked. I said, maybe after two weeks you'll stop. Maybe after two months you'll stop. Maybe after two years you stop. Even if she doesn't stop, yet she can go to Jannah or not. There are many Muslims who are having alcohol. Drinking alcohol is a bigger sin than having pork. Right or wrong? Right. This is hikmah. At least the shirk is not there in our life. I will not say no, no, unless you don't have, unless you don't stop eating pork, you can't give the shada. Fool. Right or wrong? Right. And what research you want to do? Yes, get convinced. Yeah, convinced. But one more thing. Yes. Uh, but. Yeah, but. Dharm, right? Lekin, lekin, you would, lekin, but is a big question. Yes, brother. I see what hai. Sanatana dharm ke baare mein janna hai mere ko. Yeah, no, no, okay. no problem. I want to know what the thing is. As per the Quran, 1400 years since, it means the Quran was in existence. Yes. So what about the Sanatana Dharm? What Sanatana Dharm, age? according to Swami Vivekananda, the present Veda that you have is a very small percentage. Most of the Vedas have been lost. Okay. They do not know when exactly the Veda came into existence. Okay. Who did it come to? Yet they believe it is the word of God. Most of the scholars say the Vedas is 4,000 years old, but according to Swami Dhyan and Saraswati, he said the Veda is 1,310 million years old. How many? 1,310 1, million years old. But most of the scholars say 4,000. Now when you do research, you come to know, yet today it is not there in the pure form. There is no book on the face of the earth which is in 100% pure form, 
Beside the Quran. Okay. You put it to the test of science. All the other religious scripture will fail. You put the Bible to the test of science, it will fail miserably. You put the Veda to the test of science, it will fail. Quran is the only religious book on the face of the earth which is yet there in its pure form for the last 1400 years. But what was your opinion regarding this? It means how many years it was the existence, Sanatan Dharam? Sanatan Dharam, I lead from the scholars of Hinduism. No, it they was the right thing, but you have slight knowledge. Yes. Because why I was asking this question yes. is... Sanatan Dharam is closer to Islam than the other Hinduism. Yeah. Sanatan Dharam is much more closer to Islam. It's a more pure form of Hinduism than the other religion. Other sect, sorry. Because I agree with you. Because that, uh, why I have raised this question is, if you go with India, most of the them you will be having Hindus, okay? Muslim yes. percentage is less compared yes. to Hindus. Yes. If the Sanatan Dham is having large extens existence, then this uh, uh, Islam, it may be, I think this would be the oldest one. If that is your logic in that the world, the if that asking, is your logic in the yeah. world, there are more Muslims than Hindus. <laughs> Uh, that is also anyway, right thing, in Islam, majority doesn't win. In Islam, majority doesn't win. Suppose I am alone Muslim, and if there are thousand Hindus around me, that doesn't mean they are right. No, this no, no. is a wrong logic. Quran says in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 81, it's mentioned in the Quran, Wakul ja al batil, inna la batil When truth is heard like in falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. So never does it mean that majority wins. Majority is not right, what is haq is correct. Do you understand? So yeah. This logic that majority wins, it will benefit me. Because there are more Muslims in the world than you. And you are living in Qatar. In Qatar also there are more Muslims, correct? Yeah. In Islam, majority doesn't win. You check it with reason, check it with logic, check it with your heart, and you'll come to know which is true. Sure. Okay, thank you. So yet you're not prepared. <laughs> the moment already when I have started, I have read the Kalma. Sorry? The moment when I have started... I know, I know Quran. you said the Kalma, but maybe you said it just for reading. See, okay, one now. is saying with conviction, one is just reading and you read it. If you read it, I know you read it. One is with conviction, yes, believing there's one God, believing Prophet Muhammad. That is the real thing. Reading like that, Kalma, is, you read very fast. Okay, I'm ready to read. Oh, okay, mashallah. You believe there's one God? Yeah. And you believe idol worship is wrong? Yeah. And you believe Prophet Muhammad is the messenger of Allah? Yes. Is anyone forcing you to access Islam? No. Are you doing it out of your own free will? No. Are you doing it out of your own free will? Sorry? Are you doing it out of your own free will? Yes, yes. Sorry. Okay. I'll say it in Arabic and you can repeat it. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illallah. Illallah. Wa ashadu. Wa ashadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Abduhu. Abuhu. Wa rasuluhu. Wa rasuluhu. I bear witness. I bear witness. That. That. There is no God but Allah. There is no God but Allah. And I bear witness. And I bear witness. That Prophet Muhammad. That Prophet Muhammad. Is the messenger. Is the messenger. And servant of Allah. And servant of Allah. MashaAllah. We become Muslim and I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make you strong. Brother, I pray to Allah that may he make you strong and inshallah I feel you will be amongst the strongest. Thank you. Thank you. Because you know, if it's difficult, it's strong. And I pray to Allah that may He make you guide other people to the truth. May you go to Jannah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any non-Muslims on the beach? As long as non-Muslims are there, my energy is high. Are there any non-Muslims on the beach? On the microphone, are there any non-Muslims on the beach? Only Muslims. Are there any non-Muslims here? Non-Muslims? Muslim. Are there non-Muslims on the top in the lady section? No. There's a reward there. No non-Muslim. They will come to the reward. Are there non-Muslims here? He want to ask a question on behalf of his friend. Who is no, no. Is he a non-Muslim directly? On behalf of it afterwards. Any non-Muslims here? Any non-Muslims on the beach? MashaAllah. Always try my level best. I'll to at least complete all non-Muslims. You know, I was in Malaysia last month, and I started the talk at quarter to eight. Till quarter to three, yet there were non-Muslims asking. 
one more sir one more sir one more sir it was the longest lecture of my life 6 hours lecture with question answer session previously it was dubai dubai was 5 and a half hours i started after tarawi and we had to end before sohur you know it was sohur time you know we cannot we cannot start the fast without having sohur so we had to end at 5 and a half hours that was the record but last month in malaysia in malaysia in kl mashallah i broke that record it was 6 hours now mashallah it's not long it's just i think i came at 9 40 10 11 12 1 oh, only four hours two hours to go no problem <laughs> <laughs> anyway once the non-muslim ends then the program is close to the end okay we'll we'll allow the reward sister the reward sister to ask the question yes sister most welcome assalamu alaikum my name is zainab and i am from india मैं रिवर्ट होके सात साल हो गया है मैंने कुरान पढ़ा है तो उसके अंदर एक सूरे अल अजाब में शायद मुझे याद नहीं है लेकिन उसमें लिखा हुआ है जो भी रिश्तेदार में शादी करते हैं वो सिर्फ और सिर्फ हुजूर के लिए है मोमिन के लिए नहीं है लेकिन इंडिया में पाकिस्तान में सभी जगह पे रिलेटिव में शादी होती है तो ये जायज है या नहीं है The sister asked the question, she's quoting a verse of the Quran of Surah Azab, chapter 33, that for the Prophet, he can marry among the relatives, and for the others, they cannot. This is totally wrong. What the verse of the Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 23, 24, that you can, you should not marry, you should not marry that woman which, I, which is the wife of your father, because you cannot marry a mother. You cannot marry that woman which is the sister of your father. So there are certain close relatives who you cannot marry. Otherwise, per se, first cousin is marriage is allowed. So the Quran gives permission that for the Muslims you cannot marry your direct relation. You cannot marry brother, sister, son, mother, daughter, father, and your direct paternal and maternal uncles. There are few restrictions. The other relatives, you can marry. This is given in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 24. For the Prophet, there is another exception, that from this time now onwards, you cannot exchange any woman from the woman that you have, because the Prophet had more than four wives. Once the revelation came that maximum you can give four wives, for the Prophet, there was an exception. He could keep more than that. But that doesn't mean the Quran gives permission for the Muslims in general to marry the relatives except those which are mentioned in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse number 23 and 24, that is brother and sister, mother and son, daughter and father, paternal uncle, maternal uncle. First cousin per se you can marry. Hope that answers the question. नहीं मैंने मतलब सूरे अल्लाजाब शायद यासिन से पहले वाला सूरा है और 49 से 50 की आयत है उसमें तफसीर में पूरा लिखा हुआ है क्या लिखा हुआ है कि आप मामा की लड़की पुपु की लड़की ये सब कुछ सिर्फ और सिर्फ हुजूर के लिए जायज है उम्मत के लिए नहीं ये ऐसा नहीं लिखा हुआ है नहीं मैंने पढ़ा है Surah Azab chapter 33 verse number 49 to 52. Ye Quran hai. Unke liye exceptions for the Prophet. There are exceptions that he can marry more. And he can even marry the close relatives who the normal cannot marry. But jo India Pakistan mein hota hai, it is following the verse of the Quran of Surah Nisa chapter 4 verse number 63 
आप फूपू की लड़की खाला की लड़की अरे आम और आम मुसलमान भी फूपू की लड़की पापा के लड़की से कर सकती है मैं रेफरेंस दे रहा हूँ आपको लेकिन कुरान में लिखा हुआ है कि ये सिर्फ मोहम्मद के लिए उम्मत के लिए नहीं है ऐसा कहाँ ने लिखा है ये आपको गलत फहमी हो रही है मैंने इसलिए बहुत सारे लोगों से पूछा और आंटी से भी पढ़वाया उनके आप इसमें आंटी, भी ऐसे ही लिखा आप हुआ है। आंटी से मत पूछिए कुरान में पढ़िए मैं कुरान पढ़ के ही पूछी उनसे कुरान के अंदर वो बिल्कुल जो लिखा पुपी के लड़की से शादी कर सकते लिखा है वो आम मुसलमान के लिए भी है आप जो मुझे देखो आप क्या कर रहे बताता एक पर्टिकुलर वर्स जो है ना मिडल ऑफ दैट वर्स इट से दैट एंड अ बिलीविंग वुमेन इफ शी गिव हर सेल्फ टू द प्रोफिट and the prophet desires to ask her in marriage a privilege for you only matlab muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam kaun si bhi aurat se kar sakte hai wo pehla verse is common for everyone ye sirf prophet ke liye hai baki nahi samjhe aap na main nahi samjhi i can i can only say it in english kyunki english translation nahi samjhe aap english samajh mein aata hai aapko thoda 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 to iske andar ye likha hua hai Okay, and the daughters of your uncle on the mother's side who migrated with you, and a believing woman, if she gives herself to the prophet, and the prophet desires to ask her in marriage, a privilege for you only, Haan. not for the rest of the believers. But if a woman wants to do something, or Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, "I want to do something for a woman," then she should do it for a woman. If I ask a girl to marry me, she is not required to marry me. Do you understand? Yes. The prophet is on a different level. Okay. तो मतलब तो मतलब वो वो जिसको चाहते हैं वो ऐसे कर सकते हैं ऐसे हाँ। नहीं उ, कर सकते नहीं सकते उसका मतलब ने जो पहले आज में भी लिखा हुआ है क्या वो अपने फूफू की लड़की से कर सकते वो आम मुसलमान के लिए भी जायज है सिर्फ ये लास्ट पार्ट खुशूस मोहम्मद सल्लम के समझे आप जी वो पहले पार्ट को आप मर्ज कर रहे दूसरे पार्ट से आप समझ रहे हाँ, मतलब एक ही आयत में तो मैं समझ नहीं पाई हाँ, एक आज के बहुत से हिस्से पहला हिस्सा में लिखा हुआ है कि आप क्या आप अपने अंकल के बेटी से कर सकते आंटी की बेटी से कर सकते ये लिखा हुआ है सूर्य निशा में भी वो जवाब मेरा सही है जवाब बदला नहीं लेकिन आपकी सहूलत के लिए वापिस से मैंने आपको खुश करने के लिए खोल के पढ़ रहा हूँ समझे आप मेरा और एक क्वेश्चन है एक एक क्वेश्चन बहन जी बहुत से लोग खड़े सब मुसलमान ही चाहिए छोटा सा क्वेश्चन है क्वेश्चन छोटा रहता है जवाब लंबा रहता है बहन जी जरा मैं बाकी लोग से एक एक राउंड तो पूरा करू लास्ट क्वेश्चन है बस अच्छा पूछे मतलब हिंदू लोग जब मर जाते हैं उनको जलाते हैं और मोमिन को तो कब्र में अजाब होता है तो जब मोमिन को गाड़ देते हैं तो उनकी आत्मा उनके अंदर जाती है उनका अजाब स्टार्ट हो जाता है तो हिंदू की तो बॉडी नहीं होती तो उनको अजाब कैसे होता है भाई साहब कब्र के आजाब के लिए होने के लिए कब्र में जाना जरूरी नहीं है अगर कोई डूब के मर जाता है तो क्या उसका आजाब नहीं होगा नहीं उसकी बॉडी को दफनाएंगे या जलाएंगे हिंदू तो? को छोड़ो अगर एक मुसलमान एक घर में आग में जल जाता है जी। तो उसका आजाब नहीं होगा नहीं वही कैसे होगा पूछ रही हूँ कैसे होगा वो वो मरने के बाद मालूम पड़ेगा <laughs> अभी अल्लाह तला को जैसा देने के आजाब देंगे आप सब आजाब है, है। अभी कैसे होगा वो अल्लाह जाने मैं थोड़ी अल्लाह हूँ और क्यों इतनी फिक्र करने का है हम जब सही रास्ते पर रहेंगे तो आजाब भी नहीं होगा ना आपको ज्यादा फिक्र है कैसा आजाब होगा आपको ये फिक्र होना चाहिए मैं गुना नहीं करूँ गुना नहीं करेंगे तो आजाब भी नहीं होगा ना इनशाला लेकिन सभी से होता तो है इसीलिए तो, तो अल्लाह से इस्तफार करो अल्लाह से इस्तफार करो क्या क्या अल्लाह तला हमारे गुना को माफ करे इनशाला अल्लाह माफ करेंगे इनशाला शुक्रिया even for that they no need they don't need a permission from their first wife second wife in case they are going for third or fourth my question to you is that there is less patience among the female side 
and the social circumstances where there is very hard to lead one family when the person wants to go for two, three, when they know they can't have justice with them. In such condition, certain states have made it a compulsory law that man before going there should get permission from the first wife. Still, do you say that avoiding the social circumstances or corruption among the relation where man mostly disowns the second or third wife or they divorce them just for the social pressures or family pressures afterwards, do you still say that they don't need a permission? Or if they do, in circums such circumstances, should such laws of state be religiously followed or not? Sister has asked the question that most of the men, they love having second wife. She did a survey, I think. Huh? <laughs> I'm a victim to this. Sorry? I am a victim to this. No, if you are a victim, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. If you are a victim to certain things, you cannot say most of the men. You can say some men, no problem. Correct? So if you are a victim to certain things, you cannot put all the men in the same bracket. Okay, anyway, coming to your question, that men, when they want to marry a second wife, they don't have to take permission. Because Allah has given them permission in the Quran, but certain states have said that they, it should be compulsory to take permission. What is my view? In Islam, Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 3, marry women of your choice in twos, threes, or fours. But if you can't do justice, marry only one. This statement, marry only one, is only given in the Quran and no other scripture. If you can't do justice, you have to marry only one. That means Quran gives permission for a man to have two, three, or four wives, but they can't do justice, marry only one. In Islam, under normal circumstances, a husband need not take the permission of the wife before marrying a second wife. But in Islam, marriage, nikah, is a sacred covenant. During nikah, a would-be wife can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia to the husband. Similarly, the husband can put any condition which is permitted by the Sharia. That means if a woman marries a man, she can put the clause that I will only marry you under condition that you cannot, that you do not take a second wife. Now, because marrying more than one wife is not compulsory in Islam, she can put a clause saying that I will only marry you if you do not take a second wife, she has the option. If women don't put the clause, who's to blame? Sister, did you put that clause in your marriage, Nikanama? Uh, basically, uh, Sister, in our... Sister, I'm asking you, please, your questions are so long, you're so emotional. Yes or no, did you put a clause in your Nikanama before marrying that my husband should not take a second wife? It was already cut when the Nikanama came to me because this is what is I'm a common tradition. I'm asking you a simple question, yes or no. Did you put the clause in the Nikanama that my husband should not take a second wife? Did you I was put not yes? asked for that. So who's to blame? If you did not ask for your right, who's to blame, me or you? If you don't ask good, even I will not ask. I'm asking, that means you did not know your religion, right or wrong? Did you know when you got married that you can put a clause in the Nikanama? Did you know yes or no? No. Who's to blame, you or your husband? Who's to, now you know? Now you know or not? Mister, now do you know or not? Yeah, now I know. That means your Nikah Nama, you can put any clause, but you cannot put a clause. You, you cannot tell your wife, you cannot tell your husband, you should not offer Salah, because offering Salah is Fard. So you cannot prevent your husband from doing something which is Fard, neither can you force him to do something which is Haram. You cannot say, I want you to have alcohol every day, because having alcohol is Haram. But anything which is Mubah, which is optional, you can put a clause saying, if he agrees, he'll marry you. If he doesn't agree, he won't marry you. Khalas. So if you don't know your deen, who's to blame? You or me? Who's to blame? Why are you talking about the state? Forget the state. Every individual Muslim, man or woman, can put any clause which is optional. You can put a clause that I will only marry you if you give me every month 50,000 rupees. No problem. Agree? Agree. 
has the money, he will agree. No, or you say one lakh rupees. Put a clause. He may agree, he may not agree. You can demand the mayor what you want. You know, mayor, how much mayor you kept, sister? But if they promise sister, a mayor, and how much they are not See, I'm giving them. I'm asking you a question. What is your, where do you come from? You are saying my name is so and so. What was the mayor in your marriage? One lakh. One lakh rupees. What can you do with one lakh rupees today? It's worth nothing. So why did you agree with that mayor? Who's to blame? Because you or there me? was no other option. Ah, so the problem is in you. Problem is that then you have to do. If there's no other option, that means you found the best. See, sister, Islam has got various options and varieties. The problem is that the Muslims and the men, they do not know their deen themselves. You don't know the deen and then you blame Islam. In Islam, the right has been given to the man because to protect the woman. And, and if you hear my answer, that why does Islam allow a man to have more than one wife? It's basically to protect the woman. If every man marries one woman, then women will be unprotected in this world. Because today, sister, there are more women in the world than the men. Do you know that? In New York alone, in USA alone, there are 4.3 million women more than men. In Germany alone, there are 1 million female more than men alone. In Russia alone, there are 10 million female more than men. If your sister or my sister happens to live in Germany, my, my sister happens to live in Russia, and there are 10 million females who have not found husband, only option for them is that they either marry a man who already has a wife or become public property. Do you understand? Public property, Dr. Zaki, it's such a harsh word. It is the most sophisticated word I can use. So, polygyny, a man having more than one wife, has been given to protect the woman, not to degrade her. The problem is that many of the men, many of the Muslim women, they don't know their rights. We are to blame. We don't know our deen very well. Our deen, the amount of rights that the woman has in Islam is phenomenal. In other religion, the woman has to give money, right or wrong? In India, you have to give dowry or not, normally? Yeah, correct. You Did you give dowry? No. Did you give dowry? No. You received it. Alhamdulillah. So Islam has given rights. If there is something happened with your husband, and if he's not following Islam, then there are ways. I'm not telling, and one more thing, if your husband requires more than one wife. So why should you not support him? What is the problem? You tell me one thing, if the husband goes every day outside, huh? outside to other women, as long as he doesn't marry, most of the wives did not mind. No, no problem. But you go in America, you go in America, you go in America, you go in America, eight different sexual partners before they settle down. A good Muslim would say, I would prevent my Muslim sister from becoming a public property. I wouldn't mind sharing the husband if she is a good Muslim. Do you understand? Sister, do you understand? I, understand I feel you are emotionally so charged up just because your husband took a second wife. No, this is not the issue. Problem is, he is not owning his relations. This is the problem. He this is, is my message. Of by you to all the people who are here. Please, if you're going to own the relation, own them well. Don't desert the relation. Because not owning relationship means when he married the second wife, did he say he was the second wife or not? But if he leaves you without giving you a word, you don't know where he is. He is not giving you your pocket money. He is sister, not knowing sister, you in what conditions you are sister. then. Sister, all this is doesn't carry weight because I cannot give a judgment without hearing the other side. Whatever much you criticize your husband, point number one, a good Muslim will not criticize the husband in public. Do you understand? Public Allah, don't know me, Allah public says don't, in the Quran, don't know the person. Verily, Allah is with those who, even if my wife, however bad she is, I will, mashallah, she is very good. Mashallah, she's the best wife in the world. <laughs> but even if my wife was the worst wife, I would never criticize her because I want to go to Jannah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the best Muslim is that who's the best to his family, including the wife. Now, if your husband hypothetically is not good, you be good to him, khalas. 
He should say, how much am I torturing my wife? Yet she's praising me. His heart should melt. Irrespective, the heart does not melt. You will go to Jannah. Do you know that, sister? You are losing your Jannah, sister. My advice from a brother to you is you are losing your Jannah by criticizing your husband in public. Do you understand, sister? But you're not understanding my question. I, my don't, question have to under I don't have to understand you, sister. Because I, as a person, cannot give judgment without hearing him. He's not present here. It is Giba. It is Gibat. My advice to you is that, sister, forget about Gibat. Forgive, you'll go to Jannah, inshallah. Hope that answers the question. Can we have the next question, please? No. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I read a paragraph in Yohanna Bible. Uh, say that uh, this is the everlasting life to know you uh, the only true God and Jesus who you send uh, how, ca how can brother and sister who believe in Bible understand uh, this paragraph according to their belief sorry brother can you repeat your question I couldn't understand your accent can you speak a bit louder and slowly okay I read a paragraph in uh, Johanna Bible say that this is the everlasting life to know you, the only true God, and Jesus who you send. In Johanna Bible. Johanna. Yes. Talking about the Gospel of John. Yes. Talking about the Gospel of John. Bible is only in Arabic. Yes. Bible is in Greek and Aramaic. Arabic English. What? Bible uh, is not in Arabic. A translation. Translation. I don't know the Arabic translation of the Bible. Uh, James uh, King. The King James version King. is in English, not in Arabic. Translation of King oh. James. I don't know the translation by heart in Arabic. You say the English one. I I know the translation, the translated Arabic uh, paragraph. Okay, fine. Do you have any other question? No. Okay, fine. Can we have the next question, please? Hello. Um, I'm asking this question on behalf of an atheist friend. Uh, the question is, um, I didn't have an answer for it, so I'm asking for some advice how to answer it. If God um, has knowledge of everything, um, he knows when we are going to sin, uh, when we are going to commit a good deed and ultimately if we're going to go to heaven or hell then why the, my friend was asking me why should we try and please God and believe in God if our, our fate is already determined the brother asked the question that if our fate is already determined in that destiny is there, so why should we try and please God? What you have to understand in destiny, that's Qadr, you Muslims have to believe, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has knowledge of the future. For example, if in a classroom, if a teacher teaches the student, and before the examination, the teacher predicts that this teacher, this student will get first class first, this student will get second class, that student will fail. Now, after the examination, you get first class first, he gets second class, that student fails. Can the student who fails blame the teacher that because the teacher predicted, I will fail, I failed? No. No. The teacher knew that the student, this student was very studious, used to do his homework, this student used to play hooky, used to see movies. Teacher predicted. Similarly, in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ilm -e gab. The teacher being a human being can make a mistake. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not make a mistake. Allah has knowledge of the future, but he knows what you're going to do. For example, if you come at a crossroad, we have four options. Road number one, two, three, four. You choose road number three. So Allah writes in advance on so-and-so date, on the 5th of June, 2016, when you come at a crossroad, you will choose road three. It is not because Allah is writing you will choose, because you will be choosing Allah writes in advance. Do you understand? Allah has knowledge of ilm -e gap He has knowledge of the future. It is not because Allah has written you are doing it. Because you will be doing it, Allah writes in advance. So who's to blame you, Allah? Me. You. 
so allah has knowledge of the future in advance and is written it down who's to blame you are to blame for example once you pass your graduation you can earn honestly or you can cheat you choose to cheat who's to blame you allah you so allah writes in advance after you finish your graduation you will start cheating it is not because allah is writing your cheating you will be cheating allah writes in advance so that is the reason you are responsible for your deeds you have to follow the quran and sunnah if you follow the quran inshallah you'll go to jannah hope that answers the question just sorry what one point then sorry please there are too many i will just have one last session <coughs> just one last round okay. only one question for a person we'll just do one more last round before we end the session yes sister last round from the microphone on the top from the right left down and here too last yes sister assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh mariam hai main house wife hu mera sawal hai ye sood ke bare mein maine ek hadith padhi thi jo hadith mein sood ke bare mein nabi kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam ne kaha jo sood dete hai aur jo lete hai aur isko shayad dohrate hai aur to iske help karte hai sabko ek hi gunagar hai to mere sawal hai जो लोग ये सूदी बैंक में कम करते हैं यानी बैंकर हैं उनकी रोज़ी खाना हमारे लिए कितनी जायज़ है और मैं छोटा सा एक दाइल अल्लाह का काम भी करती हूँ तो ऐसी the riba one who gives riba one who involves in riba all are the same so how much can we be with a person or eat from the income of someone who takes riba the prophet said that if a person indulges in riba it is totally haram you cannot work in a in a conventional bank this income is haram you are you also having food from this income it is prohibited best is that you have food from the clean income hope that answers the question can we have the next question from the sister on the top Is there any sister on the top, please? Assalamu alaikum. Okay, can we have the brother from last question from this microphone? Assalamu alaikum. Sir, आपका साथ में हम लोग को मिलने के लिए आया। भाई साहब माइक में तो बात करो ना माइक के उधर उधर बात कर रहे। माइक को अरे हाथ को फोल्ड करके रखे हाथ को नीचे करो माइक को ना। सलाम वालेकुम वरहमतुल्लाह वालेकुम अस्सलाम वरहमतुल्लाहि व बरकातु हाथ तो खोलो ना भाई साहब बोलो भाई साहब आपका साथ मिलने के लिए बहुत कष्ट किया अंदर आने के लिए हम लोग दो दोस्त थे माशाल्लाह अभी आ गया अंदर ना आने के लिए कोशिश कर रहा है अभी तो अंदर आ गया माशाल्लाह मुलाकात करने के लिए माशाल्लाह अभी अंदर तो आ गया ना वो सवाल किया आपका भाई साहब अंदर भी आ गया सवाल भी पूछ लिया माय नेम इज मासूद हसन I am a diploma in mechanical engineering. Uh, my first identity is I am Indian. And next question, if you ask what is your religious, I will say Muslim. But what? Why Muslim? Because uh, my parents are Muslim. But when I came here, last five hours when I am listening your uh, lecture speech, I realized that uh, I am only one person Muslim only, because I don't know nothing. It's a past Muslim chapter. I don't know nothing, but with my little experience and knowledge, I can say that Mus Islam is the science. Science means uh, continuous study, observation, and arrive some formula which is universally true. For example, <laughs> mathematics. There are so many formulas. There are physical science, chemistry. There are brother, brother. Did you hear the rules? Your question should be in two or three sentences. <coughs> yeah. If it is so, more than two or three sentences, it's a speech. Yeah. The speech time is over. There are so many non-Muslims who are direct question. Now you are beating around the bush. Yeah. Question should be in two or three sentences. So okay, I will finish my question. My question is that peace to be not hurting any religious sentiment, not damaging any individuals, not damaging any sentiments. But why peace to be is banned in India? Yes, the brother asked the question when T when peace TV is not hurting in is not hurting any sentiments. Why is peace TV banned in India? Because the government doesn't give us downlinking permission. You go and ask the government why they are not giving us downlinking permission. If that is the case, so no, not that is the case. We have applied, we have fulfilled all the requirements because it's a very popular channel. Yeah, 
I know that. I know. Uh, you know it's now, popular, no? Very good. Now, 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 so that now, you have to go and ask the broadcast ministry. Yeah, I know the answer. Now the, my my our prime minister is coming next two weeks. Where? The, here. Ah, you tell him. Here in Qatar. Qatar. So whether we can raise this concern? Raise it very good. No, no. Somebody should raise. If our you raise it, no? Why somebody? No, no, we don't know. For some organizer should raise this concern. You raise it, no? You are also a citizen of India, or not? Yes. You are a citizen of yeah, India, yeah, or not? Yeah. Ah, raise the question, no? Okay. Can we have the last question, please, brother? Brother. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, sir. Last question. Busy, I'm talking. Is it over? Is it over? Sir, uh, I would like to ask you one question for my Hindu friend. Yes. Uh, I, can I speak Hindi with you? Please. Uh, because, uh, most of the people sir, won't understand. Sir, I say that I do good work, I charity, I help the man, I help the man, I do good work, I do good work. Why should I pray? Why should I pray? Why should I pray? He asks me. The question posed by the brother is that his friend is asking that I do good deeds, I help, I give charity. Why do I have to yet pray? When you give charity all the secondary, prayer means you are thanking Almighty God. In prayer, we are thanking Almighty God and we are asking Him for guidance. If you are doing charity, God is giving you all this air, water, health free. Shouldn't you thank Him or not? Yes. Prayer is separate, charity is separate. Doing prayer is more important than doing charity, right? Yes. God has given you all this health, given you this wealth, given you this life, given you water, correct? Yes. Should we thank Him or not? Yes. If you give charity, will that be sufficient? No. Yes. Charity is lesser good deed than prayer. Prayer is number one. The first thing Almighty God will ask you on the Day of Judgment among your deeds is about yes. your salah. That is the reason if you don't offer salah, yes. it is the fourth major sin in Islam. Hope that answers the question. Wa akhiru dawan alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Doctor, the beach is requesting for a question. Non-Muslim. Andy says non-Muslim. Non-Muslim, I cannot say no. Yes, you're most welcome. Last question from a non-Muslim. I'm sorry, sorry, sorry for coming again. From the actually, beach. No problem. If you're a non-Muslim, I love it. Yes. Yeah, actually, I, uh, I was just asking the second question now. Sorry. Uh, actually, I was just noticing the question answer session and immediately this came to my mind. Actually, if I believe in Buddhism, actually, Buddha asked to follow the Dhamma. And he never told to believe in the past life. And he never answered that there is an afterlife, afterlife or something. Uh, and he just kept quiet whenever any disciple of Buddha came and asked, is there a God? He just kept quiet. And Sorry, I cannot understand. What is the last sentence, brother? Buddha whenever kept... there is a disciple of Buddha coming and asking before Buddha that, uh, what do you say about God? He just kept quiet. Yes, he was silent. He was agnostic. Yeah. And also, uh, whenever there is a question like, is there any afterlife? He just quoted that. You no need to uh, worry about that. You just be here with peace and <coughs> please do the good deeds and please follow the Dhamma. Like in Hinduism, they say Dharma. In Buddhism, they say Dhamma. Of course, the good deeds. You so just what's the question, brother? Yeah, if, if I'm believing in that, uh, if, if I'm having a belief of that, then why I need to worry about uh, hell or heaven? And do I need to go ahead? So what's your question? I don't understand your question. Buddha said, follow the Dhamma. That I understood. Yeah, yes. But what's your question? And he, and he never told like there is an afterlife. And also he never told like there will be a heaven or hell. Yes, he was silent. Yes, yes. So what's your question? If, if I'm believing like that, and if I'm being good here, and if I'm just following the Dhamma here, then I think I, I no need to, uh, you know, just to believe that I will be going to heaven or hell. So I can just live here peacefully and uh, with all the fellow people. Brother, if you don't believe in Astral, I am asking you a question. Hitler, Hitler incinerated six million Jews, correct? Yeah, yes, I... Imagine yeah. he comes here, he lives a peaceful life. Kalas, do you think God is just? Six million Jews he incinerated. Yes. 
So do, do you think there should be justice for him or not? Will you believe in such a life? Someone comes and kills 6 million people and he goes scot free? No, definitely not agree. That means, should there be life after death or not? Should yes or no? He should be punished. So this is logical. You can hear my answer on the subject of life after death where I've proved scientifically and logically the existence of your after brother. So th this year after should be there. Without that, you cannot live in this life and you cannot say what is good or what is bad. Year after is a must and you have to believe in it. Hope that answers the question. And one, 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 one thing, sorry, sorry. You are just quoting that 1400 years before only the uh, Islam. I cannot hear you, brother. Can you speak a bit 14, loudly? 1400 years before only this Islam and the uh, teachings have been uh, just gotten propagated. Uh, like I told you before, like before 25, I mean uh, 2500 years, Buddha was there. And of course, even we in the Middle East having some, uh, you know, uh, historic things left behind, of course, in Afghanistan and also in Pakistan, we have Buddha idols. So it just says that there are peoples who follow Buddhism in the Gulf region, but then it might have uh, vanished or the peoples might have then converted to Islam. Brother, what is your question? I can't understand your question. So for example, historically speaking, Gulf region is having Buddhism. Sorry? Historically, Gulf region had Buddhism. Yes. But then it, the people then just converted to, uh, you know, Islam. Uh, what I'm thinking is that maybe the Dhamma might have translated, uh, maybe the Dhamma might have uh, changed into Quran or something. Is, is that right or because I, but this know. is all nonsense. Dhamma changed into this. Quran is a revelation. Okay. If Dhamma, ch I gave such a long talk on scientific points about the Quran. The Dhamma doesn't have all these scientific points, brother. It's illogical to think like that. Do you understand? Actually, actually, he, Buddha didn't actually, think... actually, brother, I spoke about science today. Yes. When you put this test of science to any scripture, all the scriptures fail. Now you are saying Quran is from Dhamma. No, there are, there are sayings that Quran might be from Dhamma because... Who said that? I, I heard, I heard actually. You heard wrong things, brother. Anyone says anything you want to believe. I gave a talk talking about scientific aspects of the Quran. Now you are saying that Quran has been taken from Dhamma. If you put the test of science to Dhamma, Dhamma will face the test. Do you understand? Okay. Brother. Yes, 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 yes. So if something which is unscientific, how can you get a scientific thing from something which is unscientific? I'll just read through Quran once again. So that Therefore, the last and final revelation of Almighty God, which has been preserved in the true form, it is the Quran. Okay. These are all your weird thinking that this is from there and this is from that. Quran is a word from Almighty God directly. I gave a lecture proving to the atheist about the existence of God. Who is the author of the Quran? The creator, the sustainer, the cherisher, this creator, this sustainer, this cherisher we call as Allah. Do you understand, brother? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Brother, do you believe in one God? I don't think so. I'm still not yet prepared to believe in God. Okay, I would I request you to read the Quran, the translation. Sure, with and I pray to Almighty God to guide you. Yeah. Dawan, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh,